Hello, everyone. Yeah, that doesn't work. Keep it in. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it in. Keep it in. Fine. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the episode about what is the limit of free what speech. What is the show that we're on? Do we have to when... say the name of the show? No, he doesn't. They, they uh, all know. Yeah, everyone yeah, knows. Freedom of speech. He doesn't title. have to say anything, motherfucker. Yeah, how dare you censor him that For way? Example, <laughs> should it be illegal to chew tums whilst doing a podcast? No, Don't forget you to should introduce be chewing that. tums at all times. No, this is a terrible idea. I disagree. Tums taste disgusting. What about like, chewing what? on Alka Seltzer? I hate I, tums. They, they 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 taste like vitamins. Which tums are all right. Yeah, I have, what about chewing on Mentos watched, while you drink Diet I Coke? I have watched Endless <laughs> Jess eat through an entire <laughs> thing of Tums just because he for likes them. For fucking them. leisure? For fucking God. pleasure? Yeah. You know, some, Michelle is at a what stomach ache. I have, I have just snacked on some Tums a when there's Tums around. I've eaten like two or three. Oh. I've never, I don't think I've ever even had a Tums. It's like the same with those like gummy vitamins. They're delicious. I want They're just giant oh, sweet God. tarts that are fucking Wait, great, are and they make your stomach do, not hurt anymore. And you can eat good. like ten of them a day. So Tums taste good? Tums are like some bizarre and disgusting like twisted interpretation of a of, of like a buttermint. <laughs> they like do, buttermint, do you, but they, but they taste butter? like cough medicine. Do you guys remember um, when I found that jar of gummy vitamins oh, that had yeah. melted in the sun mm-hmm. and fused into a puck? And I and I shit. and I carefully extracted the puck from the bottom of the bottle, and then took a big bite out of it, and briefly became oh. the healthiest creature in the universe, <laughs> and leveled the entire city block that I was living in. Well, you guys good times. Good now. times. Uh, hey, so who's here? Let's uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's get well, uh, well, uh, over uh, over to the left over here. We have a man who crosses professional boundaries to criticize individuals in his own medium. Digibro. I am a monster of a man. <laughs> we have and I will the, rape. <laughs> we oh. have the sometimes frustratingly silent hypocrite. Nigger. <laughs> it wasn't silent, <laughs> just freedom. Then. Oh, no. We have the man who deigns to criticize an entire half of Homestuck, Munch. Uh, it's me. Welcome to Manga Mondays. Today we're going to be talking uh, about... <laughs> Sex. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Tricked you! We have the resident nigger guy, Nate Bestman. That's not accurate. Uh, also, I would say <laughs> that uh, I would say that lesbians are physically incapable of having sex with each other. That's my free speech. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, yeah. guys, did you guys? I didn't know this until like mm-hmm. I, I thought about it for a second, like three years ago. Like scissoring, like isn't possible, basically. That's like, well. I mean, you can get close. You can get. What pretty do you mean close. it's not possible? <laughs> like, like the math like, doesn't check out, Ben. It in. just doesn't check out. <laughs> audience, weigh in. Tell us. When the last Fucking time what? you scissored was. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 think about it. Think about, like, the actual act of scissoring. Like, that wouldn't, like, what do you be fucking mean? Pressure. There wouldn't be Wait, enough pressure you, there. you make the pressure. What I are you against? I mean, are you trying don't to say that two we, vaginas don't... being pressed together can't cut through paper? Like, is that what you mean by, like, yes, they are not I mean. capable of being <laughs> oh. scissors? Oh. <laughs> They'll moisten and tear the paper. It won't be a clean cut. Anyway, to That's why lesbians should be banned from construction work. <laughs> we have Ben, female blackface saint. <laughs> um, wow, female blackface is just offensive. Regular blackface is back and it's cool again, yeah. but female blackface <laughs> is not, it's still not okay. You know, we're not there yet. Mm. Give it time. Mm-hmm. Give it time. That reminds and me of my old catchphrase, have, uh, "nigger bitch funeral," that I kept saying all the time, and people would give me weird looks, and I was like, I don't know why I keep saying it. <laughs> uh, and we have uh, Tom, who I don't, I can't really think of anything you've said that's ever been offensive, so. Introduce yourself. I'm scared of this episode already. <laughs> this is going to be good. All right, We've so. got two like loaded episodes back to back. Tom, Tom, quote, Tom, communism is the only moral economic system. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, it was, uh, it was, it was right. recently yeah. Karl Marx's like birthday, my lord <laughs> yeah. and savior, oh, apparently. <laughs> oh, was it his so, birthday? Oh, that's uh, right. Happy birthday, yeah. Carl. You oh, did it, buddy. You did the episode properly. You made it to the to begin the episode. To begin the actual topic, has this ever happened to you? Complain about something that people are doing, to which someone else goes, well, it's my free speech, to which someone else goes, well, it's my free speech to criticize your free speech, to which someone else goes, mm. it's my free speech mm. to criticize your free speech, to criticize my free speech, to which someone else should go, why do you even following this line of argument, but no one ever does? That's what we call a free speech cascade. That, that, that was yes. that was a words cascade that just washed over <laughs> me, like I, like, like I was drowning in the ocean. 
What, what, well, it's been what, every day of my happened? life. The last 15 years have been on the fucking internet, man. Yeah, I mean, it's just been uh, it's, forever. Uh, the, like, you, the, you'll see a lot of the time these days. People get, like, people want to get, like, technical victories over each other. So someone, like, yeah. will say something, and the, the big, maybe it's slightly overly general. And it's, the other person will say, well, that doesn't apply to everyone. All right. You know, uh, you know. You know what it is? It's the modern gun. Mm. It's yeah. it, because <laughs> yeah. because guns were invented so retards don't get killed. Mm. Like <laughs> you you you're like, "Oh, I'm physically deficient and weak and big people can beat me up and take everything I have." So I'm going to invent a device. Is that what we device. call a retard? <laughs> a physical retard. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, it, any if, so if you are in podcast. any way <laughs> if you are in any way retarded as in like the, you know, like to, to 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 be lessened mm. in some way, you know, like you are lessened Is than that... the regular human. Do you mean like disabled, or you just mean like people? I mean, who like are the not broad, like you know, when you say like some something's flame line. retardant, you are you mean to say that it like is not capable I, I don't of flame? Think that's a common term. You know, <laughs> well, retarded uh, just yes means slow. Yeah, exactly. If you're too slow, like you're not fat, you can't run away from the big Sonic guys who are going to catch you and beat your ass. He's, he's always fucking mansplaining. <laughs> Yeah. You need So what a you're gun. saying is that nowadays so the modern we just use gun, technical fallacies okay. to like well, get yeah, out of it. Yeah, because on the internet what what is strength? What is physical strength is intelligence because mm. all anyone has is their words and their argument. So if you're intelligent, that means that theoretically you should destroy everybody on the internet. However, they invented guns and the guns are called rhetorical argument where mm. yeah. they can fuck you on the technical aspects of your argument. And they don't have to be intelligent. They just have to know these so-called rules. But, like, because of the fact that if you're too intelligent and you're actually following the rules but doing it in a way that, like, goes above people's heads, then it doesn't matter because they have the gun, you know? And, and the oh, gun well, if, you're, if you're too yeah. intelligent, you could theoretically say everything exactly right, but people will just latch in on one of the, you know, areas that touches something that's simply politically incorrect or incorrect, and then exactly. they can just make a whole case about how, like, it's not that your argument is wrong, it's that you shouldn't be listened to because you've right. said, you know, just For something example, that's... basically like, what happened with that Google thing, like an right? insult. Yeah, yeah well, that's When, when can that's I true. cash in my IQ points for various prizes at, at, <laughs> at the store? I want to cash in it for tickets or coins. You, you, do that, <laughs> you do that at Chuck E. Cheese, dude. You just gotta exactly. go there. It's a game yeah. of wits to Chuck the Cheese. Yeah. 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 So, hey, everybody. So, that's why That's why you go to school. You, you go to school to build up your IQ points, mm-hmm. to go to mm-hmm. Chuck E. Cheese, to cash him in for a plastic ring shaped like a spider, and then you do it's it like, all. Uh, <laughs> it's like when I play Ganguro Girl, or uh, the, and many of the clones of Ganguro Girl, where you gotta go to the library and read to buff your intelligence points so that you can woo mm. the, the, the slutty girls who like smart guys. That's The, the, the titular Ganguro. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, 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 I but, was yeah. at Steven Buster's, and, and, I, and I was getting mad IQ points while studying <laughs> the art of monkey ball and I, and I got so smart that i was able to purchase with my raw brain power a pinkie pie plush this is whoa. a true story holy whoa holy shit the I think pinkie pie would be pleased by this story guys i think no one should be able to say anything at any time regardless of circumstance or law or whatever <laughs> amendment made it's your freedom well, of speech to think hey, that so you true. know we did cover how hey. language is a problem, but we gotta just ban it. So, it's, it's, mm-hmm. so I've been asleep. So I've been asleep since the last PCP, and my memory is a little hazy. I just woke up from a stupor. Mm. Uh, the last one we did was on language, right? Yeah. Yes. That's like the same thing. It's like a sequel. Yeah. It, it's you've gotta fucking it, build. You've gotta fucking really build upon the fatigue the, the, department as well. The, the, <laughs> well, the groundwork. We gotta build upon this, the groundwork that we laid. Specifically, what the, the prompt of this episode is, because we're trying to get sometimes have prompts that are like full sentences rather than just single words. Yeah. So that the conversation isn't so amorphous and vague and weirdly utilitarian. The specific hmm. title, for us at least, is What is the Limit of Free Speech? Because that's where really interesting and also very frustrating debates take root, which is mm-hmm. like when there's things right on the line between like someone expressing themselves and someone like pulling off an extortion. Hey, can you know I, I can mean? I hey uh, Wait, yeah, yeah. I got I got something. Okay. I got something. I just looked up I'm looking at the definition of free speech on oh, urbandictionary.com yeah, yeah. and I got to say it's extremely enlightening. Mm. Oh, Here we go. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> get get ready for this truth bomb everyone. Free speech dictionary definition. The right to express any opinions without censorship or restraint. Mm. 
college definition. <laughs> the right to express any opinions without censorship or restraint. Unless you're a conservative. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Smash. Got him. <laughs> Smash yeah. the glass ceiling. <laughs> right. Smash the conservatory. Uh, so th- that is that writing prompt, or that that question prompt of what are the oh, limits? Oh wait, the... definition two. Definition yeah. two. Yeah. Nothing more than an illusion. Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this guy is woke. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, Moose. This this guy Moose who wrote that Moose, one. He's a he's a well woke done boy. champ. Uh, let me throw out yeah. my position, and then I'd be interested to hear rebuttals because my I think mine is one of the extremes. So I think. Like, so free speech is a legal issue. It's like, should you be put in jail for saying things that are wrong? I think that you should literally not be criminally penalized for saying literally anything. Except, mm. oh, but okay, that's not true, because then the shouting where... fire in a crowded theater could actually kill people. Right. Yeah. As long as your yeah, words, right. okay, and like, okay, by extension, let's say, for example, that like, there's a Jewish kid, and then everyone starts calling him a kike, and then he kills himself. Like, if that happens, what's the connection here? Is that free speech? Like, should that be criminalized? I yeah. And the thing it about would. it is that that's mm-hmm. the speech is like not entirely the point. It's like it, they could have yeah, just easily yeah. said, "We don't like you. You're different." And that's none of those well, words yeah, are like what, technically wrong, I mean, but that that I mean, is what killed the him. The words, the yeah. words themselves don't matter. Like, I don't think those people are responsible for his death. They're not murderers, mm-hmm. but no. like. They were deliberately Boys. abusive, which I mean, is not I would right. say that cool. they they we shouldn't they are just on, give people free reign to do that. Like I would say that his death is partly they are partly to blame, but mm-hmm. it had nothing mm-hmm. to do with yeah the word choice. Can, like, can we like can we at least said. agree on this to begin with? Like no individual yeah, word yeah. itself yeah. should ever be forbidden from being spoken. Like <laughs> yes. there yeah. should never yeah, be. That is exactly yeah, what absolutely. I wanted to bring in and say. I wanted to say that like outside of context, no individual word can possibly be seen as harmful unless there's certain frequencies in our fucking neurosystem <laughs> that can be irritated by certain syllables. There is no way that individual words outside of context should be put into the realm for niggers only I, if you know I what think I, mean. I think the fact that like even in like academic or like journalistic yeah, yeah. writing you can't say like you have to say the n-word like that is yeah. so immature and ridiculous yeah. to me because you're yeah we we know what the fucking word is yeah, i know mother, what it is just say the fu- word i'm not a child yeah. Like, if you I, say you, it, I'm yeah. going to think it. Yeah, yeah. you bitches. Think inwardly. <laughs> Is this really helpful? I don't Wait, think so. Wait, did you say think n-wordly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, <laughs> right? We synced this episode with the word n-word, and I kept thinking it was inward. And if you listen back to that, you'll hear me mm-hmm. saying inward. Oh, how how interesting well, and relevant. Well, we won't be relevant. showing that. Uh, no, but uh, there you go. Uh, but anyway, I was going to say that, like, the... Uh, what... Is there a re- the reason I think people say N word is specifically for kids, right? Like that's the big thing that everybody comes back to. But here's well, my position. Know. Well, uh, okay, I don't know if that's okay. Why. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe with a word, you know, like nigger, they, they want to avoid saying it. You better not let your it. kid listen to a single rap song ever if you don't. See, want but that, that's yeah. my point. Give them that's kids my bomb. point. I'm listening to like we, Kanye. We gotta ban hip hop because we love well <laughs> black people. <laughs> hip hop that uses we the N word, I guess. Them, so we'll ban. We'll ban. But them. okay, here's my position. Was that racist? Was that racist of me to imply? that black people make rap music. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's about as racist as saying that black people, like, play more basketball, which I think is just true, right? Maybe I was yeah. racist. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's racist. Can't that's racist. Let, me, racist. let me look up the Urban man. Dictionary of Basketball like, okay, and we can get but, to the okay, bottom th- there's, of this. There's, okay, here's the important thing about this. First, I was going to say that lit- like kids should just hear any word. I don't care. It's fine. Uh, but, but about this other topic about, like, uh, being racist or whatever, uh, I think that there's there's two important things to do at the same time when you're making any of these kind of statements, and it sort of relates to free speech. It's that like you can make statements about groups that just are demonstrably true. Like for example, uh, like black people are more propensity to get sickle cell anemia or whatever. So uh, that's simply a fact. Uh, but then if you look at an individual black person and you say, hey, right. buddy, you're getting sickle cell anemia, that is, in fact, racist because you're, you're yeah. discriminating based on race. I and mean, every possibly, individual just needs to be treated as an individual. My mind is go. being... I prefer Cooley's anemia. I, I have to go back it's a my step. my favorite anemia. <laughs> my mind is being mm-hmm. torn in twain thinking about this. This is okay. going to... I need all of you to participate in this with me and mm. a, as asking this you mean, like, question Mark of yourself. Mark Twain who wrote literature with, that used the word... Literally, nigger? what 
mm. is the worst that can happen from your kids learning swear words. They they, they will s- you they'll in say them. They'll if, they'll, they'll, they'll they'll make you uncomfortable them. by saying them. That's yeah. literally the only reason. You, you even That's hear literally people. It. You even hear people who are pretty open about free speech talking about how it's they still don't want kids saying bad right. swear words but yeah but, no. but really why, why though but really what the why fuck? all right let me let me fucking go through this because yeah, yeah. I, and i think devu i think you might be in a similar boat to me on this because we both grew up like very like proud to follow the rules like proud to I, do what I, our I, parents I said on Hashtag on some level edge. yeah and yeah for, for with my family my Social brothers and i edge. had a sort of pact that we were like we're not going to swear till we're 18 <laughs> that was just a thing we said uh, now, don't so want to go to jail I, yeah. I started breaking that in the eighth grade because I would swear mm. at school in front of the school kids, but I never swore at home in front of Victor and Shakes. I didn't want to like let them down, and mm. neither of them started swearing till they were eighteen. They just kept to it the whole way, whereas I was a piece My of God, shit and broke it like early. But mm-hmm. like. The thing is, we knew the swear words from childhood because my parents had showed us Beavis and Butthead and South Park like when we were little. So I knew all the swears and I I used to swear when I was a kid. But when I was going into elementary school, my parents were just like, yeah, this word, this word, this word, don't say those at school. And I was like, okay, because I was a well-mannered kid. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't say those words. Except for at like you know I I wouldn't even say him at home eventually because we kind of you know decided we weren't going to swear because we wanted to be good yeah, kids yeah. but then once we were all eighteen we just started swearing constantly because we we all know the words my parents swear constantly as it is like mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, they weren't protecting right. us from it like that's how we think and the consequences of this have been literally nothing because everyone yeah, nothing, swears all the nothing. time. It doesn't fucking I, yeah, matter. I'm really, Dude, I'm really I, just. I, 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 wait, wait, let, let, him, let him say. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just like thinking about like that. Like, I'm curious about like the the the, the whole like um like black market of swears in like school <laughs> school meta is like you're not allowed to say this, and then mm-hmm. people you know kids would be like fuck, and then everyone would be like, mm. <laughs> and I'm well, like, it starts w- with if H-E if if swear words sticks, would yeah you know would would um. Would kids come up with words that are like banned, or like would they just secretly like? There's always things that you're not allowed to say. Yeah. If it's not oh. like swear words, would it be something else that they would be it's like to show how ask, cool they are? The answer is yes, because mm-hmm. me and my brothers, in replacement of all the swear words, we just said yeah, things yeah. that were similar. Which the yeah. funny thing is that the things that we said in place of them could get us in trouble in like some of our friends' houses or at school. Huh. Like we would say heck or frick or like freak <laughs> or just yeah. like dude with the freak. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, the famous oh, yeah. dude with the freak. You said that in one moment. of the early videos in your old channel. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude with the freak. In my old, well, because we didn't, you know, we were under 18 when we made those videos, so we didn't swear in any of them because we were going to show them to our parents. We didn't want them to see us swearing or anything. So, oh. you know, we would, we just wouldn't swear even in the, in the content. But, like, the words we were using, like, I would go to friends' houses and they'd be like, you can't say that word, you know? Like, they function like saying something. the N word. They work in the exact right. same way. You exactly. Know? Con- yeah. But it's like, you, you, you can't avoid having a word for those situations because that's how you learn to talk. Hey, here, here's a question. It's how normal people right. speak and how the Dude, media you're absolutely speaks. Right. No, you're a- absolutely right. But let me ask you a question real quick, everybody. Um, if I go up to a black person and I say, you fucking N-word, how, like, what, <laughs> do, do, do I win? Do I get off scot-free for saying these things? <laughs> oh, like, I didn't say the word. Likely. I win. Right. I win, this- right? <laughs> Is this is this just the uh, is this just the racial slur podcast? It, no, I feel like I feel like we're focusing a little too heavily. I have, like, like literally everything, literally everything Digi talked about. I want to say a thing about. So like, yeah, other families, other things you can't say. For example, white trash. So I am doing a fucking favor for a, fa- a, fr- a family of a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm driving them to a place for like a really important thing, and no one else is willing to help them. I'm taking time out of my day to fucking do this shit, and I tell a white trash joke. <laughs> Right, uh-huh. and I guess it's more or less at the expense of their family. But like my family and me, we're all equal levels of white trash. We're we're all like pseudo rural Missourians over here. So I didn't think of it as like a thing, 
but like I guess they were a little bit quiet and then my friend was like that wasn't appropriate when we were alone and I'm like sure sure you fucking nigger I'm helping you people fucking out I'm the one fucking driving and according to other people who I've spoken to in my yeah. life if you're driving you set the fucking rules for all fucking speech that's the first one you know that rules that's a driving, perfectly so fair I point fucking heard. Uh, but I want to respond yeah. to Ben though Ben the reason I think that our our, our kind of first Wait, trajectory real quick to, to, yeah. to just to piggyback on what he said just a mm -hmm. little bit I absolutely agree anybody who talks shit about you when you're doing them a favor can get fucked well of course absolutely yeah, especially absolutely. if you're like shitting on my music when i'm driving you around right. but well, see that's the problem the thing. These... My, i okay, then whatever. confronted my friend on that about calling that inappropriate and she was just like well i was just saying it was like offensive to them i'm like look i'm fucking triggered by the word inappropriate that's yeah. my fucking exactly that's my fucking trigger because like my you know being a well-mannered child generally the only thing my dad would ever like get me on would be like overreacting to something or inappropriate something. So anytime anyone uses those words, you have a times twenty chance of pissing me off. Just a fucking rec just a fucking you know. Uh, now now everyone on the internet is gonna be like, hey Davu, you feeling inappropriate today? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but uh, what Ben was saying about race, I think this ties into... Yeah, Ben has a lot to say about race, let me tell you. Um, That's, wait, no. I, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, but but th this, is, this is what I was going to say. I, I th I've been misconstrued. <laughs> the, the reason that I think that's our, our, our place to start with this is because, like, what exactly is, like, a swear or, like, something that you can't say? It's like they're, like, a basically a, a crass way of referring to, like, a forbidden topic. So, like, oh, for example, oh, like, um, you know, like, like nigger, you know, uh, racial, whatever, like, Wop, greaseball, etc. All these, like, they they imply racism, and really, that's what's like not acceptable, and that's perfectly I, reasonable. I, I want to let everyone know that this is literally the most alt right podcast we've ever made. We are <laughs> that's not even true. Space dude, while dude, no, wait, oh, oh, wait, wait. I have an answer in an academic question, so. way. But but like comedian David I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. A little fast and loose. Okay. Stand-up right. comedian there. David Crow postulates that swears have a lot to do with their phonetics more than just uh, their semantics. Sure. So okay. for example, like, can <laughs> it feels like you're getting whipped by someone else's mouth, whereas if you just say sex. It's just a little bit more, you know, harmless. Well, or uh, like, okay, but you know what? Ben's right that we don't need to focus specifically on swears. I, so I much. need to jump back to that alt right comment that Munchie made because mm, mm. I seem to remember where, like, ten years ago, this was literally the entire Louis C.K. stand-up routine, and every right. liberal was behind him. Well, we know what that boy was up to in those yeah. days. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the tides of yeah, he he went yeah. back on a lot of it. Funny? He became that, like, a fucking <laughs> lib cuck because that's that's, yeah, where, that's yeah. where culture right. went. But like. That, like, literally the stuff I was saying earlier about the N-word thing was literally a bit he I, did. I mean, we've I, stayed the same, and the Overton window has shifted around right. us, I, but exactly. I, 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 I've been about. thinking yeah. a lot, Digi, about how the internet, like, used to be pretty liberal in a lot of ways. Like, you think, like, French was always, yeah, like, no. like portrayed as conservative, <clears throat> but they did, they had a lot of, like, lib no, They were ideas. not they conservative until recently. The yeah. Trump yeah. thing yeah. changed yeah. a lot of things. Look, I haven't been on the internet for the longest around here but I've been I think I've probably frequented politics boards for like longer than most people uh, like so starting in like you know 2007 ish I would go to the politics boards and I'd be the only non-liberal there every mm. single fucking time sure what sure. changed was the social justice war that is as far as I can tell from my own mm -hmm. my own anecdotal perspective single-handedly shifted everything it's because it, uh, there were no millennial conservatives until we had until they had an enemy i said we but i'm right, not exactly, a, yeah, i'm exactly. not one of them but so, like, so 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 what it was was originally the demographics on politics at least on you know pop media boards where i would go i'm sure there was plenty of conservative dedicated websites but like you know like the tig with tig forums or like the escapist forums the screw attack forums it was always like it was always the only demographic politically was just Democrat voting liberals, like generally people who you would describe as pretty blue pilled, right? Yeah. I guess particularly because I was in gaming communities, and at that time it was all about Jack Thompson and Fox News. Those were the enemies, yeah. both conservative, both Republican. I mean, right? yeah. But then gaming started attacking itself for, with, from within, Sarkeesian style, and all of a sudden the demographics split wide open. Now we have far more hardcore liberals. 
And then we, then we have the alt right people who are still who are still sort of like center right because they're not like Christian, they're not like fucking, they're not like Ted Cruz conservative, mm-hmm. but they're more like Trump conservative. And then it just seems like the whole like blue pilled, mild mannered Democratic liberals just don't even exist among my generation anymore. It just sort of split yeah. those two ways. Of well, what what, what I think mm-hmm. happened because like I grew up super liberal and you know my mom listened like raised me on like political music and stuff and. Uh, back in the 2000s, the reason that everyone online was liberal was that being conservative meant being pro-war. Like, Bush had t- taken us to war, and, like, the, the, right. the platform of liberals was anti-war. We wanted peace, We want, and, and, like, pro-abortion, pro, like, stuff like that. Right. But once, once the war was no longer the big concern yeah. because like mm-hmm. whether well both sides are equally likely to go to war so like yeah, we don't yeah. like yeah. now that it's like an no. identitarian conflict and like there's a there's a whole young generation who's like well you know yeah we will back the republicans cuz they're not arguing <laughs> for war they're just arguing for not this stuff that we don't like you know? right mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. fun fact i learned from freedom Aid radio barack obama was the only president in us history i, I believe unless i misheard this fact the only president in us history to have war going on when he took office and war still continuing when he left office. You could argue, so, though, that that's go. just because, again, he is like an, uh, a replaceable tool who was just put in place and, like, the machinery around him just continued to operate. Yeah. Well, that's and, it. That's you know, why nobody cares. Yeah, like, yeah. nobody cares about, about being war, liberal yeah, anymore because right. it doesn't seem like it, it, it doesn't say it doesn't stop anything. Yeah. Like, when Bush I mean, it's was ironic in office, to point out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, and people have, were like, so angry oh. when he, like, won both elections. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you had Eminem making songs about it and all this shit and all these people. And then, like, we finally got a Democratic president and it didn't end the war. So yeah. it's like, right. yeah. why be Democrat? Dr- and at, at after he won the fucking Nobel Peace Prize. Either, right? Like, to remind yeah. everybody yeah. of that. Yeah. If I remember correctly, one of the things that people wanted was to stop the drug war, and all Obama did was minimize mandatory minimum sentences, but nothing yep. else. The fucking <laughs> war on drugs continued completely Utilizing un-turbed. drugs to pay for secret wars around the world. <laughs> well, well done now. Yeah, all that shit well, Stay well, woke, well, everybody. Hey, Listen to guys, let's, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but listen, guys. Let's actually, we, we've been dancing around. Let's get to the real topic, the limits of free speech. Right. Munchie, were, okay, did you want to comment? I, I, I just want to say, okay. on the subject of the internet being more liberal yeah uh just something really uh illuminative was hmm. in the parkour dude 91 saga <laughs> renowned uh, liberal uh, one yeah. one of the main like enemies of parkour dude 91 was this guy fly away now and fly away is now Big during Canyon's the legendary trial of parkour dude 91 mm-hmm. one of his main problems was jace you are racist, and that's okay. not good. And so okay. he went in hard on you know critiquing uh, Jace's like 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 racism, mm. which is like a thing that I don't think like could happen nowadays. I don't think anyone like would like would like oh, he, 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 racist... he, 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 for con- no for context. Fly nine now is a member of like a trolling cult. It's like a four chan mm-hmm. trolling. Well, cult so w- who, like, was this sincere criticism or was it a joke? He's that, he's saying no, that true. like a troll would never use that as a weapon against somebody now. Yes. Because like well, being mm-hmm. seen as racist would be seen as like that's what the trolls are now. Is that they like they use oh. racism themselves, you know. Yes. I mean that yeah. that's sort of like uh that gorilla mindset guy will call people pedophiles ah. despite yeah. you know. Mike and, and I don't want to imply yeah. that 4chan's never like been racist or edgy or anything. I think there's been undertones of, you know, the, the Scientology activism and stuff like that. And there's always been, you know, jokes about Fox News or whatever the hell. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. I just think it's an interesting change in the world. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, limits on free speech. Mm-hmm. I uh, I was talking with that with, with the wife and being all like, oh, yeah, because then, you know, there's the obvious yelling fire in a crowded theater argument. And she told me, I didn't research this. I never researched anything because research is bullshit because everyone says different things. <laughs> she said that she's heard that that argument was concocted during the First World War to minimize and delegitimize anyone who protested the war. Sorry, which America. argument is this that was diminished? The yelling fire in a crowd. Oh, that, okay, okay. That's, that they're saying, we need to stop the war. Mm. And then other people are like, you need to be silenced. To which they'd be like, oh, free speech, bitch. This is America. To which other people said, no, what you're doing isn't free speech. It's like yelling fire in a crowded theater. 
and it's well, like I mean, okay, let's so so that's an example the the yelling fire in a crowded theater where like there's some like action that's happening and you're like compelling right. people to take an action based on false information, you know. So if right. there actually was a fire and you yell fire in a crowded theater, that is a reasonable I, I thing to is, do. Is that it's it's less about that you can't speak, but it's more about that you take responsibility for what happens as a result of the speech. Right. Like, right. Y- for example, if you tell someone come here for free cupcakes and then you don't give anyone free cupcake, or like you know, uh, buy a buy a cake and get a free cupcake, and then you don't give it. That's false like, advertising. No, that's sure, like sure. That's yeah, that's false the, advertising. The, 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 yeah. the difference is, is that it's not the fact that you've said the word fire. It's that your intention is to sow chaos. Yeah. And that's different. true. Your intention is to make people like then, do bad things. Uh, unfortunately, when it comes to this, like we have, like if someone is just talking to their friend and they say, yeah, so you know, me and my friends are gonna have a bonfire tomorrow. If you say that in a movie theater, obviously you're fine. If someone stands up and just yells the word fire and starts running around screaming, different intentions, obviously. And it, so, like, all we right. can do is, like, we need, like, a court system to just figure out which, what was what the if, intention. Only we had what a if, court system. And what, if yeah. the, um, what if the guy yeah. was, like, mentally mm-hmm. uh, unsound and Ew. just uh, yelled fire because that's what he does? Well, then we just take it case by case. Like, if he couldn't help it, then, like, we probably shouldn't let this the guy hang out in The thing is, with, with free speech, is yeah. that if we could take it case by case, I think people would uh, would prefer that because... It is uh, mm-hmm. like a, a lot of these things. You can't just ban a word and have it fix all the problems. People well, are going to find ways to get around it. There's always going to be like, like, like uh, people skirting the system and like right. stuff. Well, I mean, we like do we saying. do do it yeah. case by case. That's what the court system is for. Yeah, like, if what you screamed fire well, in a theater, yeah. you would go well, to like, trial. Mm-hmm. People, mm-hmm. I guess, well, I'm the, they don't. Okay, <laughs> they the. I don't know anything about anything, actually. I don't know anything about justice. <laughs> well, uh, I just know that I mm-hmm. I think I used to think free speech was like um, you can say anything you want, and if you ch- if people try to silence you, that means they're wrong. You don't have that in Britain. But um, that shit ain't there anymore. I mean, never I, was. I don't think. What free I speech? Think I just it's not speech codified in, in law. In they the do UK have nowhere near the kind of freedoms we have in America in Britain. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, well, USA, the, the, USA, 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 USA. For, for what it's worth, Dude, the reason that... that wait, I'm sorry, we cut off Gib. I think he was finishing jokes, his right? point. I'm sorry, oh, Gib. Sorry. I don't know. Uh, I didn't think he had any more point. That's why we're just I, cutting I him had off. a bit of a point, but it doesn't matter. I was trying to rescue matter. him. Uh, I think in... The, USA, the reason that USA, 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 USA has its First Amendment was because, like, we wanted to protect your ability to talk shit about the government. Because right, that was the whole we point. Didn't, they didn't like we did that. Like, That's what we founded. Yeah, on, this oh, talking shit country. about yeah. the government is how we started the revolution. Like, yep. that was the whole point right. was that we shit talked their the government until government. everybody got pissed off, mm-hmm. and then we fought I mean, them and I became can our do own that. people. Well, no, and then it, people do that can. constantly. But like, for well, example, they changed the rules over time. Like, you can they do have freedom of speech in in Europe yeah. now, but like, <laughs> not necessarily USA. to the same okay. extent. USA. Here's something I, mean, I was thinking USA. about. Okay. Um, with uh, when when YouTube rolled out its whole like we're gonna just like bury videos that are like hateful and racist and misleading and shit. I remember thinking, you know. That they're saying, well, it's free speech. You just can't have speech that's hateful and racist. And I'm like, you know, I think that the whole idea of the Enlightenment era free speech revolution is that you can say anything, even things that are hateful yeah. and harmful. I, I mean, you know what the you purpose can say of things as long as they're nice probably dates back to thousands of the years. purpose of tenure yes. in in universities is so that you like professors have the freedom to pursue academic pursuits that challenge mainstream ideas exactly for these kinds of reasons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't get why people are typically like offended when they see something that like contradicts them. For me, the most moment I hear I mean, something that goes against my perception, I'm fucking excited. It's like my favorite time of the day. It makes my fucking month. I don't, I personally don't feel like I have enough ego to say that I just love to hear things that fundamentally challenge my worldview. Like, I am a weak human being who's entrenched in his own biases like everybody else. Uh, and, uh, except for Davu, of course. Davu is the, the one last, exception yeah. here. I do want to say, yeah, Davu is legitimately an exception. Davu legitimately, and well, not naming, I, I have watched this man change his entire mind at the drop of a fucking pin. Like, well, I'm not saying that's pins. necessarily a great thing to do either. You were able to accept your fucking incorrect fucking metaphor, uh, 
uh, uh, mm -hmm. idiom fusion yeah. that you do. You were able to fix yourself of that. Congratulations. Yes. Well, okay. So, so, okay. To put a point on it, this is the question. Okay, is free speech or is hate speech free speech? That's like the biggest question right now. Of course. I think. So I think that's, definitely I want to hear everybody yes. Weigh in. Because yeah. I think definitely yes because. Hate speech is determined by the people who are getting offended. That's and right. Yeah. Let's say, for example, if in a liberal government, mm -hmm. or you know, in a, like liberals, they 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 would take, you know, change the law some in some way, and it would be like, okay, if you cause offense, you're going to jail. And then at somewhere down the line, the people who put that law in place are now technically offensive to a majority that sprung up. Mm -hmm. then they would go to jail, and it just feels like a stupid thing to put into place. I the mean, idea that yeah. the, some sort of, like, vague... Like, because it's always... It's, it's an ever-shifting, like, what is offensive to who depends on who's around and how many of them there are. That's true. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, should the government be in the business of determining what's hate speech and what's not? I mean, Ben, if you want to you comment, yeah, feel free. You can't base law on opinion. But we, which, I mean, yeah. I guess you kind of can. Yes. You know what? We do. I guess that's we, all I, that I anything want, is. I think that the problem life. is that so people are so worried about the, <laughs> people are too worried about the type of speech instead of like where it's being used. Like mm -hmm. what? Like if I let's say I have like a private blog where I am like constantly saying racist shit and I just share it with my friends, like. If if the let's say like it's on Facebook, if Facebook finds this thing, they're gonna delete it because it's against their policy. Even though it's private and it's just among me and friends, and it's not aggressing against anyone, it's just me expressing my my beliefs that are extremely unpopular. And like even if I personally think that like people shouldn't have the beliefs that this this person has, like why am I the moral authority? You know, like Affair, that's against yeah, the yeah. policy on what we built this country on that that there, that no one has moral authority. That's I mean, the point. You know, how about fucking Hulk? Hogan, who just was filmed, you know, against, yeah, against his will, his will and had the like, fucking tape. Uh, yep. Like, right. sure, he said the word nigger in private. Does that to make someone. him racist? You know, like, like there, watch Jesse's video for the yeah, full exactly. discussion of that. Go watch yeah. the. Um, uh, I, I'm, I've been curious about this, but do? I couldn't really find like a def definitive answer, <laughs> and I was also scared of googling it in case the Google comes to get me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. is it? Okay, so is Google, it literally? Back. Is it? Yeah. Is it illegal to be racist? No, it is That's not. Not in America. Absolutely not. But so a lot you can of the things be racist as racist do. as you like, but if you say anything, then it becomes Th that, a That's right. I mean, we can't you know, thought police, obviously. I, I want to, yeah. I want to, as an example, lay a ground rule of something I think should be enforced. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear you guys' opinion on this, because to me, I've always taken free speech and, and everything, really, in life as, like, the rule of... I can swing my fist as well as much as I want, but if I hit your face, then it's a problem. Basically, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that was okay. one of the founding fathers said that I don't remember who, but ben like Franklin, maybe I don't. Yeah. That was the idea of like what the law was based on in this country was that like you can do literally whatever you want, but the second that it hurts somebody else, that's when you're in trouble. The problem and, is what constitutes violence. Does right. hate speech? Well, yeah, exactly. well the problem yeah, also yeah. is that like where is the line on personal responsibility? If mm. I am writing a blog that. It's like I hate black people. The blog. At what point <laughs> is it? Is it that I am aggressing you by writing things that offend black people? And at what point it is? Yeah, but you you chose to read it. Now, if yeah, I was right, go, yeah. let's say that I go on someone's blog. And this is a personal blog, and I think that I think that internet websites that you own should be respected as private property. Like, of course, private property. that you invite people onto essentially because you, I mean, you pay for it. You literally buy hosting, you buy a domain. It's mm -hmm. your intellectual property. You have control over what gets posted there. Let's say that you get someone who's like, let's say I'm I'm a black writer and this guy is ca calling me a nigger every day in my mm -hmm. comments. So I IP ban him. This guy creates a new account on a new computer, shows up again, and continues doing it. At that point, I would consider this an act of aggression. Like, this person has been, not only are they doing something that they know is offensive, they've been told that it's offensive, they've been kicked off the platform, and they've, con they've circumvented the system in order to find a way to continue fucking with me. At this point, there's nothing I can do, because this person's gotten around the tools that I have at my disposal to defend myself, so this is where yeah. I should be able to say to, like, the police, hey, this guy is, like, 
you know, creating like multiple accounts to continue a harassment campaign against me. Like this is clearly harassment. I would agree. Sure, you know? sure. I think I would agree. Yeah, yeah. like internet that's harassment the- in general is something that like you know. Where harassment becomes not free speech, that is sort of a line unto itself, which is part of the reason I wanted to start this podcast for. But, like, also, in general, people do need to understand that internet harassment is real harassment for the simple fact that when you get a message from someone that's directed at you, do you think, hmm, those are some slightly less colored pixels on this screen (laughs) forming words that mean nothing? Or do you think, hmm... A person has said a thing to me. Well, yeah, yeah that was what I was, yeah. was trying to say yeah. earlier. Like, I used to. Like, when I was a young boy, I, I was all for, like, free speech means you can say whatever you want. In Like, as, no, nothing mm-hmm. should be banned. And you should be able to say whatever you like. But, like, as years go on, I do recognize that there's, there's, yeah. there's nuance to, to all things, and especially yeah. this. If, if, it, let's it, say you have the context friends. and the intent is very important to understand in any situation. Yep. And, let, let, and let's so say you stuff have a like that. Is, yeah. Let's say you have like almost all of your friends, however many you have. If you have none, imagine you have 12 friends. Imagine if 10 of your friends sent you a letter all saying that they don't want to be your friend anymore and they hate you and they list very specific things that you actually do do as to why they hate you now. Mm. Will you think... Hmm, this is some ink arranged in shapes that I can identify as words. Or are you going to be stressed out and upset? So there you go. Uh, speech right. can be like like people saying things and, and, and saying it's not meanings as, you and know, meaning things and having harmful intents can constitute the building blocks that can create the bridge of harassment. And yeah. it can be done yeah. even without words or physical activity, mm. just with digital information being transferred to your computer. It still counts as real uh, communication. Yeah. That's sure. why people go sure. on social media and all I, the time. I, the, the, I feel like I, like I understand why a lot of young people like on the internet, they get up in arms about like their ability to say whatever they want, regardless of how it may affect others, mm-hmm. because of the fact that they're young and they all they know about like incorrect language is swear words, and the fact that in school it is cool among friends to say swear words because the teachers don't let you, and I feel like that right. that they they take that idea <coughs> of like not allowed to say, and then they just ah, extend yeah. it into like internet interactions without knowing that it actually hurts people. That's a very good fucking So, indeed, indeed, I indeed. mean, I, I think that we could go back and forth on these details all day, but I, I think the reason why there's no, like, hard agreement, why there hasn't been an answer to this question is because the reality is, like... The, the the vagueness of this topic makes it basically unsolvable, except with some vast network right. of specific investigation into each, you know, individual ex- which ex- there time should when be. it happens. Which like, there should be, yeah. That's what the government should be, that's is like a, a body that exists to solve individual problems that mm-hmm. we have. But because of the fact that this, first of all, country is way too fucking big. Second of yeah, all, everything's yeah. industrialized. That's the entire way we think of the country is mass production. And, like, we just try to have everybody follow the same broad set of rules that just doesn't work for 300 million people living across 3,000 miles of fucking land. Like, it doesn't make sense to hold everybody to the same exact right. standards and hey, circumstances you, all the time. You guys want to remember We already it? don't. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. You guys, okay, there's this one example of one website that does internet interaction, very interestingly, uh, Newgrounds. So on Newgrounds, uh, the, you know, the interaction is pretty limited. You have forums, you have direct messages, and you have, uh, you have reviews, right? It's for the pretty standard, you know, early internet package. But on reviews, you can review a movie, you can review a game, and once you've done the review, the review is done. I don't think you can edit reviews. I don't think they've ever added in the edit feature. And... A, the artist who uploaded the thing that you are reviewing can respond to you by making a creator's response. A single creator's response that they themselves cannot edit. And once mm. they have written their response, it's done. And Newgrounds has responded to the tons of requests they've gotten to be able to respond to their responses. To which Newgrounds has said, our philosophy is to give the creator the last word. And I think, you know, if that were a thing that were practiced um, voluntarily, I think that that would solve a lot of harassment issues. Sort of like someone, you, you want to criticize some person on the internet, you know? Like, where does it cross the line from criticism to harassment, you know? Maybe you just come in 
you make your point, you don't be a huge dick about it. Oh, Davu, and then I love you for once this. Once you've gotten your fucking point out, and then they've made their response, maybe you give it a little bit of follow up here I, and there, and then you move the fuck on. I, that's sort of what I under. That's what I see as the pattern with these people who like get so harassed they have to like go fucking to therapy and shit, start taking pills. Mm. It's that they, they might very legitimately fuck up on something, right? As a content creator, sure. they might actually hurt people and they get called out on it and now they have to deal with it. But then they never stop getting called yeah. out on it. They have been forever banished, damned to the land of, of weeping and gnashing of tweets. I've been planning to, to launch a series for a long time, and I think I might finally do it sometime soon, because I'm ready. I've got the mental wherewithal to do this, but I want to do a streaming series called Digibro Takes on Takes All Comers, hmm. and I'm just going to make a Discord server that has an open season, like, like uh, you know, call line. Like, anybody can join the server, anybody can jump in the call, but I will only activate one person at a time. And the idea is, if you have any problem with me, come into this call and let's argue about it until you sound either you we've resolved your issue, or you are repeating yourself and sound like an idiot and need to be kicked out because the audience has decided that but, they don't want to hear but, you anymore. But Digi, you say that you can identify a terrible or good anime in just one episode, but you also say there's no such thing as an objective opinion. This is a contradiction. Because well, <laughs> reasons. What about, um, what about, um, what about, uh, food <laughs> reviews? Uh, I think yeah. those should be illegal. <laughs> I don't think those. Sh I think those should not we, be. We oh, why? We have the speech. only good food re um, review show ever created on the face of the planet. We your, have the real shit argument people here? clamor for. Um. Well, I think. That it's discrimination against <laughs> food. against bad food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, why doesn't the yeah. because it's because it's wasting eaten. food, and we all know and Ben I don't is think very people near should and dear. Be allowed. Do you have uh, any like could, like dissenting opinion? Because I'm pretty sure all of us feel the exact same way on this. Well, issue. okay, well, I think food reviews are fine. I think food video, all food. Uh, no, not, not, not on that. Not <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm about to qualify all right. it. Okay. It's, well, um, that's not the issue here. But okay, fine. It's just, it's just people shouldn't be allowed uh -huh. to find a recipe mm. and then do it wrong and then give the recipe a bad review on the internet because they, they fucked it up. Because oh, they decided, because they decided to put fucking olive oil in their French onion soup, and it's not my fault. It's greasy, you fuck. <laughs> That's a reasonable <laughs> like. Uh, the, it's not my f it's not my fault. Fucking soup lover twenty eight, get the fuck out of here. You make a reasonable that. point about how like everyone's mm. voice seems equally valid, uh, unfortunately online, and that's Once, I wish it doesn't. Wish at it some point, at some point, I realized. Mm. I think it was probably in the TBAP days. At some point, I realized that a huge percentage of the people commenting, especially on YouTube, mm. are kids, and I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute! These aren't full people. Yeah. I don't need to re. I don't need to think of. I don't necessarily need to give these mm -hmm. these opinions being expressed in the comments the weight that I would to an actual. It's, human. it's interesting you bring that. You just caught on to that because that's well, like I caught on to that. No, no, I had this realization at some point. My um, like in my YouTube my career. My default kind of thing to do when I read a comment is always to project my situation onto them. So like they are the same age as me. They are the same yeah. intellectual. Yeah. Level and that's that's always we got to avoid that though. Yeah, I do that. the yeah, opposite. Yeah, that's, I imagine that like every commenter I respond to, I just think, well, this is a dumb twelve year old. Like even if it's a good commenter yeah. who I love, yeah. like I just think, or an amazing well, nine year old. <laughs> well, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyone who well like done. leaves me like constant loving <laughs> comments about how great I am, I'm like. Nobody could be this big of a fan of me if you're above the age of twelve. Like, and sure, if they're yeah, sure. if they're like someone who bashes on me, I'm like, no one could care this much about shitting on an internet creator unless they're twelve. You know. <laughs> well, so, as Endless just said, in fact, it is true that most of these people are kids. The problem is that some of these kids are thirty five years old. Oh, yeah, that is true. damn! Now, I will say, I found one of them in person recently. What? I mean, I assume I'm being pretty discriminatory okay. here. Okay. But someone who I'm pretty sure is an internet commenter, right? <laughs> I, was, I, I, I passed them. I passed them on the side. Get that look right? about. Him. Oh, so, okay. He just <laughs> looked he about, like you know he was gonna well, go home and comment. Well, okay. First of all, he, he was, was all a, geared up to go back to the, the, his house. The tips and of his finger. Back a beer and get ready well, to comment. Well, his fingers were he weathered wearing, with action. Guys, guys, he was wearing a cod shirt, so okay, that's okay. a pretty good sign, right? So he's like probably five foot six or so. 
you know, stout, portly, like a weirdly squished looking face, mm-hmm. right? He's got that sort of like shaved head thing, but like he doesn't shave it all commentary. that consistently. You're just, yeah, you're and describing like, that, like every 35 year old YouTube commenter that I've like yeah. met. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And he has like, you know, dinky little glasses and stuff, and he just sort of walks with like a little bit of like a, you know, just kind of like walks a little bit goofily. Mm-hmm. And. Most importantly of all, he's wearing a Call of Duty Ghost shirt, which is like the least popular Call of Duty oh. game. So I'm just like, yeah. ooh, yeah, this is a guy who like has some specific opinions. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Davu <laughs> cradles his chin in his fingers. This is a guy oh my who has some specific opinions. This guy thinks opinions. individual <laughs> thoughts about individual ideas. The mad yeah, man. Like if, it was a modern, if it was a Modern Bad. Warfare 3 shirt, I'd be like, okay, he could just be a normie gamer. But no. a ghost shirt, right, that's right, too right. specific, right? So... He, Something's I can up. Feel the opinions. <laughs> what, what if from he's him? just? Like, what if he's just oh, a normal so guy chill, doing his normal right? programming job, and he just no, really no. liked Modern Warfare, <laughs> and he pre-ordered Ghost because he was super hype and didn't know he thought the dog but he's was wearing be dope. It, but he's wearing it right now <laughs> because he's still because he it, spent yeah. a lot of money on that like special edition that came with the shirt, and he just I gotta well, get my money's worth. This is just how I'm wired. Dad taught me to to, to use everything I, I spent mean, my money on. I, I feel like that way about certain shirts, but I wear them indoors when nobody can see. Wait, so did <laughs> the guy or not? Yeah, what happened? What no, happened? no, I just passed him on the sidewalk. Okay, I gotta That's tell you about just... my guy who's similar mm. at the airport. Did yeah, you, guys... you tweeted about yeah. this, man. For, I don't know. for anybody oh, who missed my tweets, Christ. this was legendary. So, 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 me and May were at the airport going going back to uh, Rochester uh, from my hometown, Virginia Beach, and like just some random college dude had sat across from us and like mm-hmm. was asking about my shirt because I was wearing a Gintama shirt and he thought it was a Bleach oh. shirt, and I was explaining. <laughs> I was explaining to him that it was a parody of Bleach, and he was just like, he just was kind of like, oh, you guys into anime? And she was like, yeah, we're anime YouTubers. We're like, it's our job. We All we do is watch anime. So we we get into this whole anime discussion with this guy. Don't dox yourself. So so we're talking to this guy for a while. We're making him a fan, basically. He's, like, way excited to hear about anime. You know, probably, like, he's, like, a 20-year-old, like, college dude. But there's another guy who's, like, sitting across the way. Who's like a big fat guy in a Ninja Turtles t-shirt? Who, mm. when we had first gotten to the airport terminal, I saw this guy and I thought, if anyone here would recognize me, it would be that guy. It's like right, what I'm right. thinking when I look at this guy. But like, so we're sitting there, we're just talking about anime for like probably 15 minutes, and then everybody gets up to go in the line, and the fat guy comes over and he's like, "Hey, I heard you guys talking about anime. I, you know, wasn't <laughs> oh, sure if no. I should jump into the conversation the or whatever, call. right?" <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, yeah, I'm, like." Okay, so the other dude, like, clearly had been watching, like, everything on Crunchyroll. Just, like, whatever mm-hmm. showed up on Crunchyroll, he was giving it a shot. This fat guy has just God, seen... I fucking hate people that watch anime. <laughs> this fat guy yeah. has, <laughs> like, just exclusively seen Attack on Titan and Death Note, and that is it. Nice. But he comes up, and he's like... Yeah, you know, I really like, uh, I was really into Death Note, you know, because uh, I, I think it's like a perfect mirror reflection of, like, The Lion King, because, you know. Oh, right. oh, I saw this tweet. Yeah, yeah what about? the fuck? And then, what the fuck? And then he's like, well, because, you know, first, like, he's like, each, each character's, like, parallel. So first you've got, like, Light, who wants to be God, just like Simba. <laughs> <laughs> and as, after what? he said that, my brain went, like, Ew, like, all the juice <laughs> drained out, and I was just, like, dumbfounded. Yeah. Like, I was trying mean? not to look at him as hard as I could yeah. he's like like I think Ryuk was Rafiki and like you know uh, I mean, I mean okay. he just basically he just compared the main characters so, of one so, to the main characters of other I was like oh like Light is or L is just like Scar because he wants to stop Simba like <laughs> that makes it good. That's, that's the mark of a great story yeah. is that it's exactly like funny, another story funny, Simba Simba is like L because he's trying to stop Scar who's the bad evil man who took over and seized power through Illegitimate evil means. Like, he's the yeah, one. And Nala yeah, but, is but like Elle Lisa because be they're both God, girls, I guess. Yeah, well. Scar doesn't want to be God. <laughs> Scar Actually, stayed he humble, does. doesn't he? Though. Uh, oh, that, that, fuck. That, I'm sorry. This just reminds me of a time I was at an anime convention where I went up to a guy wearing a samurai outfit, and I was like, "Hey, dude, you're Gene. I love samurai shampoo." And he's like, "Actually, I'm oh, no. Goemon from, uh, you know, fucking Lupin the Third." And I pretended no. I knew who that was at the time. Oh, you uh, didn't uh, know who uh, Goemon I, was? I, I didn't know who the fuck that was at the uh. time. This was this was long ago, but it's, I've never forgotten it. And I've always been ashamed. <laughs> There's nothing worse that to your credit than getting a thing wrong, you know? <laughs> especially uh, getting yep. like a. <laughs> Classic, a classic wrong yeah, I know, I for know. like a modern show. Like he looked ben. disgusted when I said, I love huh? Gene. Oh, it's so yeah. cool. At, okay, whatever. At, 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 at that one party that I went to when I was at your house, we met that one guy yeah. who, who went to some like anime cons, right? 
embarrassing. Oh, I don't. What did he? What did he look like? I don't remember. He he, he was a bizarre. He was a bizarre <laughs> like Cryptid? lantern looking motherfucker. He looked like some, some sort of like portly like last lantern. Like like the Pokemon the lantern. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he, he ta- There's he, a lot of people that could fit that he, description. He, 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 he was talking to us about how he went to cons uh, in, in the local area, but he was a big anime guy. And and then I was said, yeah, me guy? and me and Ben are like are like stars at BronyCon. We go there all the time. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, and I wish you had. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing Lantern, the Pokemon. It's just like, hey, guys, I'm going to an anime convention. Uh, I swim. do not recall that conversation gonna glow. even a little bit. So, okay, so First Amendment, right? There's yeah. one thing about oh. that that really... Co- that, <laughs> no, that, I don't that, care about that a, anymore. That's been a thing for me, right? So Let's just do another what, wild card episode. What, what I think is... Uh, <laughs> no. What I think is Bam. one of the most widely held <laughs> fallacies about specifically the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States is this fallacy that and this is going to like oh I'm tensed up because I could get all y'all fucking jumping on my ass over okay. this but okay. this perception that the first amendment only applies to units of individual solitary people mm. what mm. Do you know as what opposed mean? to like corporations no. and whatnot well here's the thing about that right because the actual text of the free, of the first amendment is uh, well, hold on. I'll just look it up. I probably should have looked it up before. First Amendment. Ahem, ahem, ahem. What it says is, ahem, ahem, I gotta keep fucking coughing to get to it. Four Congress score. Yeah, no- okay. <laughs> Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That <clears throat> is a part, like a certain like comma section that no one ever talks about when they talk about the idea of free speech. Basically, there's this idea that if people band together to form a corporation, they've now voided their ability to speak because it's no longer a person. Now it's well, a company. Well, that, that, I don't think that press clause really covers like corporations. It covers the press. Well, it, it says the press, which yeah. basically means like a co- people who report information to a in the news. Giant group of people who say things. Right? That's not like what a corporation is. A corporation is yeah. a business, a money making enterprise. A corporation is a little different. I mean, if you want I mean, to argue that a person, you know, should be treated right. like you know, if a company should be have the rights of free speech, <clears throat> that's perfectly fine. I just don't think that clause right. addresses that. Yeah. Well, no one ever, no one ever brings it up though. Like. Like, like we always like. Doesn't the, it the come up when people say freedom always... of the press? Isn't that exactly what they're talking about? Yeah, but people don't really think about it, right? Because you hear people say like, "Oh, well, okay. a corporation isn't a person, therefore they don't have free speech." It's, it's God damn it! No that part is not about it. corporations. It's about the goddamn press. I I know, okay. but like, but like, the press isn't a person, right? It's definitely <laughs> it, yeah, not it's a the person. press. It's, it's not... not okay. I'm sorry. What's what do you get? What do you get now? Because my feeling is that like you know, if you if you team up with someone like like even the PCP isn't incorporated, but it's not a person. It's a group of multiple people, right? So I don't know. It's just kind of like a. For me, I just think of that as sort of a fallacy that people need to like. I wish that um, like the way that publicly traded corporations work is obviously very very uh, problematic and really should be looked at mm-hmm. but then i just feel like people sort of throw out like the entire every single baby with that particular bath water you know I, what I, I, mean? I think i know what like, you're people, getting at you're talking about like people walk for, around as for, though if you don't represent a single person then you don't really have the right to uh, of expression i don't, well, I don't he, really here's here's a here's a here's a thought about this so for example chick-fil-a just fucking loves jesus down to their like you know, Chick Fil A right. doesn't want to give like their their female employees like birth control and whatever. I, there was like a thing about that uh, because they the like the the text they say is we have a sincerely held belief that like we are like a religious organization. This is a fundamental principle of us, and this goes against our religious beliefs, and we don't want to be forced to do things that go against our beliefs. And like yeah. I could understand someone being skeptical, especially like an atheist who's like, well, that's obviously mm-hmm. just a trick to like. Uh, get away with, you know, just not having to spend more on their employees. But the the thing is, I am 100% convinced that Chick-fil-A is 100% sincere about their love of Jesus, and that, even though I don't think he's, you know, real yeah. or whatever. I mean, you know, the thing about Chick-fil-A... They close okay, on Sunday, man. They cut off profits you, one-seventh of the days you of the would, week. You would think yeah. that that would be unpopular, mm. 
You would think that they would get a lot of backlash for that, and they do. Yeah. But the thing is, there is a large population of people who sincerely agree with yeah, them. They yeah. might be well, in the minority. I don't my, know. They might be. But there's I enough think, of yeah. them that, like, the goodwill generated within that population, right. like, course. more than makes You're, up for the fact that really like, demographic. lots of people right. and, and lots really of people don't want to yeah. eat their shit because they're, you know, terrible. Sure. Well, you're just yeah. you're appealed to your demographic. That's like good I, business. I, I, like I, I don't actually think. I don't think they're doing themselves any favors, really, by like because they they really are putting themselves in the camp of like a small minority. I I would argue. Like I guess I don't know the there's, statistics. Yeah, there's a pretty, like three quarters of yeah. There's but, but, a lot a, of a, religious most people Christians in America. Are, most Christians are atheists in denial. I would argue, especially uh, in America. Mm, okay. <laughs> most atheists are Christians. Oh shit! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, turn it around. Oh, oh, Muslims. Why do you Why do you refuse right. to love God <laughs> that you know exists and you've chosen oh, yeah. to just You're hate? Right. You're right. The thing about refusing um, birth control, right? My, I think my dad actually agrees on me with this position, uh-huh. even if a little bit like be, uh, begrudgingly. Which is, um, <clears throat> I think it's in general bullshit that you have to give employees like certain things unilaterally. Like, what happened to just, oh, you want this job? Here's what we'll offer you. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's healthcare. Maybe it's this handshake agreement. Done. I mean, I think both but of us. Fact yeah, is, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, the fact is, where the fuck were all these Christians? Like protesting the idea mm-hmm. of you have to give every employee a certain amount of health care, a certain amount of dental based on certain, you know, random bullshit mm-hmm. back before it became religiously controversial, right? Like Christians should have been on their fucking toes to realize, oh shit, if we're allowing way back in like the FDR and LBJ era mm-hmm. for the government to force you to give certain things to your employees, that could be turned well, I, against I, us. I don't think we they did back then, now. though. I think that the reason it's become an issue is because like as, as you know, things move in a, a more progressive direction in, in some aspects of American life, like the idea of right. how contraception should be, because it's like, you know, you, you can right. make an argument, it's well, part yeah. of women's well, biology well, and, thing, you know, health now, now, now they've added on. Yeah. yeah, now they've added on birth control and like abortion onto it. Yeah. It's like, well, I think it, I don't think it's wrong. I don't think you should be able to have a get out of uh, get out of health, uh, get out of benefit free clause because you don't believe in abortion. I just feel like everyone shouldn't have to be giving certain people certain things outside of like a simple hand, like a simple contract between employer. Well, and employer. I mean, I mean you know, me personally, already- I don't think I don't think any company should be giving contraception because like it's not a mandatory thing. Like, don't. Fucking uh, yeah, fuck. like abstinence yeah. is a hundred percent effective. You know, I mean that's. What I mean, they say. like uh, that's. I, I don't know. No, I mean if it's that's like if that's a thing that would be covered by health insurance, like 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 birth control is is covered by health insurance and and jobs well, provide health okay, insurance. Okay, Ben, I, so I why wouldn't I, that... I know this is an extreme example, but just just for the for the the intelligent you know reflection of of this principle, uh, it's like. So, like, what if I am one of these people who, what do they call them, the people who are, like, into getting viruses and into getting diseases? Bug catchers. Idiots. Uh, if, if, if I'm bug, a bug no, catcher. No, 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 I'm sorry, bug chasers, bug chasers. Uh, what, if, if I'm a bug chaser, and let's just say that I go get AIDS because I really want AIDS and I'm into that, like, is it then the company's responsibility uh, to pay for that? Because no. now it's a medical issue. No. No. But, and it just in the same way, I would argue, do you have exactly as much agency to not have a child and need, you know... An abort, you know, contraception or whatever. Uh, it, it's similar well, to if I know it's yeah, extreme. Well, I don't know. Yeah. You, you, mm-hmm. you, you, you have agency in lots of things. Like, why does that mean that it shouldn't be covered by health? Well, insurance? okay, this is the real point, though. I, I'm with Devu, and I'm really libertarian. I just think basically companies just shouldn't do it. They shouldn't be in the business of like giving right. health care. It should just be everyone's job. I mean, I don't job. like, th- I don't I mean, like that health the way that health insurance is set up. Yeah. Like, I don't like that you have to like work for a company so that they, yeah. so that someone will pay hey, for you hey, to get like just, just give me the money. I think it should, I think it should just be yeah. available. Well, I think yeah. it should. I mean, I think it should be universal, and I think everyone should have access right. to it, hey, whether hey, you guys, fucking work guys, for a corporation. Young or not. people working at entry level jobs or trying to get jobs in the first place. Uh, ever notice how you're totally dependent on your fucking job for your fucking <laughs> I mean, care, and you're dependent I mean, the on thing- your fucking insurance company and your hospital to get the right care, and you're responsible on your government to be able to take care of all your shit. Maybe there's a reason why politicians love to talk about how you should give people more fucking health care because it makes I- you more dependent. I just I just want to point out that about this probably applies to lots of healthcare mm-hmm. issues but about birth control specifically yeah, yeah. like birth control is cheap and children are expensive and like yeah. really the, like everybody wins like everybody <laughs> wins if people have easy access to, to birth control I like that's not, I, I don't think that it, like I think that that I think that providing that service pays for itself like a hundred it, it's only it's just, that is a real practical concern that I am very sympathetic to but it's just that when we do that it then opens up the door to this like 
like the, this Chick Fil A type <laughs> right. situations where things get what? messy because they well, they really religiously it, have a problem with doing so. Let's maneuver so this a little bit wins? closer in, right? To uh, the fucking yeah. Christian Baker being requested well, to make a gay wedding cake thing. I ju- wait. I just want to say okay. that I really think the problem here is with like the fact that health insurance is like a corporate responsibility. I think that's where the trouble comes in. I mean, you can get health care outside. I mean, I never have, so I don't really know. I'll find out when I quit my job one of these days, but, uh, mm. uh yeah. see that sound bite to your boss. <laughs> uh, wait, what was it? Someone was just making a transition. It was a topic that was interesting. Yeah, Devu yeah. was, the yeah, Devu, go. What was that? Baker being requested to make a gay wedding cake. Yeah. And doesn't oh, that's a good to. one. Do uh-huh. they have to? Now, here's my dad. Okay, my dad, I, I didn't clarify this. My dad's like a super Christian guy, got lots mm-hmm. of like degrees in Bible. He's like, he's about to go on like a short missions trip, actually. Where's he going? Where's and he his going? stance. Uh, I don't want to don't want to fucking dox Well, I thought him. it might be like you. Uga- <laughs> it was like Uganda or something. It's, but okay, to. fine, fine. So, um, <laughs> he's going to my house. Like, 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 like one of the fucking trolls is gonna go down into like central. Some slash some South fan in yeah. yeah. Some some fan some fan in like Zimbabwe will just be like <laughs> he's listening now. I like, and, I like, and, like weeks difference. later, he's like, hey, are you Devu's dad? To like the I like, first I like the difference in like laxness <laughs> that we fucking have on this show. We have we have Devu who's just like oh, I can't dox my dad where he's going on like the, the, the mission for, yeah. for for the church, and then Digi's like Virginia Beach, my hometown. You <laughs> well, know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's yeah. out there though. Yeah, no it's one's fucking doxing. I don't think a town. I don't think a town is doxing. He muted himself. Okay, he's probably been trying to say stuff, forgetting he muted himself. Well, maybe. Anyway, so my dad who did just mute himself? Is that? Yeah. Oh my god. That you know, it's just common courtesy to accept custom from people, right? So like, yeah, he'll yeah. clean a gay person's windows, for example, right? No, no problem there, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but he thinks baking. That's like artistic expression, right? <laughs> Making a cake. Make an argument, yeah. That is like yeah. something that comes from more from your soul, right? And Which doesn't exist, but yeah. Like a realm I, where like I totally feel like that way too. I thought I think Wait. it's ridiculous that like that you have to be forced to uphold any kind of like right. m- societal moral standard that is like the whole point of freedom of speech to me is that like and freedom of to be able to do whatever you want with your corporation is like, I think everybody's just a pundit for the world that they want, right? Like, exactly. We all yes. exist to I, try to promote the world that we want to live in, and oh like God. most of us disagree with each other about the specifics of that world. Like the amount that we agree on is where we've drawn the lines in our country. Like the lines in the sand is where we've like we all agree on at least. You can't kill people. Like, there's some people who disagree with that, but they are such a minority, and we feel so strongly the opposite that we're going to make sure right. those people are not listened so, to. Wait, wait, wait. Know? What was Gibbs saying? What was Gibbs saying? He was trying to chime I, in. I was yeah. going to say about the, the gay wedding cake yeah. thing, because I heard about that way back mm-hmm. when it was, like, relevant. <laughs> and I remember always thinking, like, of course, you should be allowed to refuse service if that's what you believe. Yeah, yeah. Even though I didn't think it was a good idea... I, I, mean, I think right. that the, the, the point is that you should have you should have the free you should have the freedom of expression to have a like Not unpopular expression. business model that yeah. does badly. If, yeah. if, like, you, if you, you do in any other situation, like did you yeah. there was a situation that happened a couple years back that was like the inverse of this. There were a bunch of like uh, like super hardcore uh, Christian people like mm-hmm. passing out pamphlets and stuff. And and like I think it was like like a like a pro life sort of thing that they were doing, and they yeah, went to yeah. this coffee shop to like take a break, oh, and oh, right. this oh, guy right. comes in and screams at them that he's a gay guy ah. and he disagrees with everything he said. Get the fuck out of his cafe! What are you talking about? Gay people don't even need abortion. And, and, and they <laughs> and they did, and they they had to leave, and like. All the same people who would like be, you know, like you got to make <laughs> yeah. the cake. We're totally on his side, kicking them out. So it's just like. Right. That's eh, a tough one because, yeah, like, he's that's a the double rebuttal standard. I always heard is, would you force a Jewish baker to make a swastika cake? To which, like, the rebuttal to that is usually, oh, but that would be ridiculous because those are Nazis. And it's like, there you go. What I, is actual yeah. free speech to you is all the things that and you that we have to set the precedent. Bad. The thing uh-huh. is that we don't need the government to do anything about this because the free market will do something about it. Like, that's the idea. If right, you yeah, refuse, yeah. you just go somewhere else. If you make a statement yeah. that, like, you will not make a gay cake for any 
anybody. Like, people who think that that's not okay of you to do will not buy from you. And right. Let's, you could okay. even lose your platform. Like, a, as a store, you have to be renting a space. What if your realtors don't want to support right. your business anymore because they don't believe in the same things as you? What if the people in your community want you driven out? What if they picket, like, you? You know, what if they stand in protest outside your store exactly. every day and you can't get any customers? Yeah. All of that's yeah. fine, yeah. you know? Now we get back to the thing I said at the very beginning, which is that people get into giant like twisters on like who's the one that broke the free speech. You know, it's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like who who's the one who crossed the line to censorship here, right? And we need to always be very vigilant of when we cross the line into saying the government should do something about it. I, and I think I feel because people jump to that so often, we should pay, take more time out of our day to emphasize that we very specifically don't want the government to get in on things. Incidentally, feel... Razorfist just had a video about this with the whole EA yeah. gambling thing, uh, so yep. check that out. I'll have to check that out. I, I feel so bad for the word censorship. It's really been abused these last yeah, few it years. Really it's really taken a beating. And it's gotten a raw deal. It's gotten deal. a raw deal. Censorship used to be a powerful bastion. And, like, this is a criticism of guys on, like, the right as well. This isn't just, like, SJWs. It's, like, censorship is, oh, like, when... It's, it's censorship... <laughs> When someone, you know, like, I don't know. I, I when can't the think government of an steps in and tells you you can't, when 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 people invoke yeah. the <laughs> government to say that, like, like if you were if you're petition petitioning mm -hmm. Obama to ban the word retarded, you yeah. are advocating censorship, and that was a huge movement right. that happened right. in the in the late two thousands, and uh, you know, funnily enough. And this goes back to what I was saying before about like how Louis C.K. was like the bastion of free speech and then became a cuck. Same thing with uh, Stephen Colbert. He had this amazing segment yeah, where a guy yeah. was who was doing this campaign uh, to get rid of the word retarded had come on his show. And oh, yeah. Colbert listens to the entire thing and then at the very end turns to the audience and says, All right, kids, don't say the word retarded. It's totally gay. And <laughs> this is the funniest shit I've ever heard in my life. That's fantastic. I remember like, that. He just Colbert dismantled was cool. It. Do you remember that? I remember yeah. it. Well, yeah. and, and oh, now God. he would, you know, now he'd probably be on the total opposite side of that because it looks right. good for support. Like, it, it looks good to just coteau Dude. to whatever the gay community Colbert wants you to say. Colbert is basically you know? an indie youtuber who like got picked up by the mainstream uh, and like became like a real just streamlined I, everyday vlogger here i go he is a youtuber now isn't oh, he and god Jimmy it's, a, it's a disgrace what he's doing right now god it's sickening i used to love colbert i loved him yeah jesus christ what a but yeah like yeah. think about retarded right i remember one time i made it all like the a money they threw at colbert to take that job censorship that's goddamn censorship because they infected his brain with the love of car cold hard cash it was immoral. All right, I'm sorry. All to the move. fucking Obama stimulus bucks. Yeah. Don't trust so, okay. anybody if they if they've if someone sold out enough that they can run a late night talk show. They're not worth trusting anymore. To a degree, yeah. yeah. True. Yeah. So the thing about corrupted. retarded, right? I remember one time making a chain of tweets that was like two guys talking, and it was like, <clears throat> oh man, dude, my boss, he's totally blind to the truth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, your boss sucks. Oh, dude. I'm in a cancerous relationship. Mm. Oh man, yeah, man. I totally. I hope you get out of that relationship. Oh, dude, my finances are just crippled right now. Oh man, uh I hope you get a good break. <laughs> oh, dude, this this guy I saw yesterday was this joke I heard yesterday was retarded. Mm -hmm. Whoa, hey man, it's offensive to use real life disabilities as a negative insult. Oh Christ. <laughs> but someone responded with, I don't know, with, with a very cogent argument, but I still... That was like I, my favorite sarcastic. tweet you ever made. <laughs> right. with, with the very, not really logical, but emotionally I understand it argument, which was as follows. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Saying retarded as an insult just seems kind of wrong. Which is simply because... Uh, if you're retarded, you're a worse person. Dude, I, That's I the, fucking the hate people who say shit like that because they just, like, they're just, literally, that's complacency. It's just, oh, well, I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to do what um, people well, tell me hey, is, a, like, a, the right dude, thing dude, to no, do. I, I get it. Like, like what I just said, this is the hard truth that no one wants to face. If you're retarded, you're a worse person because in our society, we value who you are on the inside. And if you're retarded, <laughs> you are actually worse at being a human being on the inside. Listen. And no one listen. wants to face up to that. It's true. Uh, no, you're not wrong. You're at, in an intellectual capacity way. If you have, you know, a mental deficiency, then yeah. you are less. But 
It's not to say you're a worse well, person than average. This isn't, if you have great moral I'm, I'm not, character, I'm not trying to disagree at all. But uh, just for example, my mom is a special education teacher. And I would say retarded to her all the time. And it was ha, very ha, ha. common for her to say to me, Nate, like, I wish you wouldn't say that. Like, that's people, you know, that's a very negative thing to say. And, like, my kids would, you know, be the kind of people. I wish you wouldn't say that, bitch. How do you like I them mean, apples? It, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's perfectly, I, it's like, I, I never, <laughs> like, did that. Like, occasionally I would try to avoid that particular word for emphasis when talking to her because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Um, which I guess is self-censorship. But, like... But it's just polite. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. I, it's, I think we all are going to, like, self-censorship is a good idea in all capacities. Uh, like, I, of course. Not I, just right, of swear words or things that are obviously offensive. Censor yourself right. all the time for all kinds of reasons. Because your inner, your inner monologue is probably word, offensive to most people around you. The, the you word know? censorship, you know, even just in its usage right now, unfortunately has this... This, the, the same sort of phenomenon that the word racist has had in that, like, so yeah. many different, like, degrees all get mixed <laughs> up in one word, and then people basically right. hear the most extreme thing when you say it. Um, so, like, I like if I delete someone's tweet, like, I understand that, is, like, you are technically accurate to say I am sort of censoring them, yes. By the way, which I, like, literally never, ever do. Uh, but, like, that wow. would be a fair thing to say, but... Beyond that, I think you are going against sort of the spirit of what real censorship and, like, notable yeah, censorship like if, is. If, the, if governments never yeah. existed but Twitter did, no one would have thought of the word censorship as meaning anything all that bad. I sort of, yeah, I basically agree. And just, instead, I just really want to point out, I never delete tweets or, like, posts or anything. I, like, I just I leave it there. I all the time. I just want well, That's fine, well, that's I fine. I you delete tweets. I want to okay. jump back I on that, right that retarded so. thing that Davu mm. was saying about the guy saying, like, oh, it's just kind of, like, uncomfortable to say that. I think yeah. that is so fucking intellectually dishonest, and it's because the, the words that you feel uncomfortable with are changing all the time. It was mm. totally different right. ten years ago. We all said retarded. Nobody thought it was weird, but now that people, now that someone in your social group is not okay with you saying it, it makes you uncomfortable. You we know? all used to say gay, right. and now gay's not yeah. cool. But I still and say now, it anyway. Right. And like, and, and well, I think, I, every, I, I think, I think gay think kind of circled around being cool. Again. Yeah, this I is how okay, this is on. how fucking I'll, simple I know people are. Mm -hmm. Is that people will fucking watch someone like that guy on the Colbert Report who will just turn up on TV and give you a sob story about why it offends him when you yeah. say retarded. And yeah. then you'll go around to your friends and be like, guys, it's not okay to say retarded. And yeah, then yeah. you'll listen to some other guy, some comedian, who will give you the exact opposite story with a decent amount of reasoning. And you'll go, oh, I guess it's okay to say retarded again because this guy made the argument and now I realize, oh, I do like saying it. And, like, people are exactly that fickle. That's what the Overton man. window does is it just We're bounces emotional. back and right. forth between yeah. comedian. This comedian made it okay to say gay again. This gay yeah. guy thinks, yeah. like... You know, now we it's got really Milo out there. Mil Milo's flaming gay. Yeah, he's going to say all these <laughs> words. You got YMS out right. there calling now, people I faggot all the time. Like, yep. And right. he's like, I hey, I, that, if um, you think I'm not able to handle the word faggot, then fuck you. And I'm like, but, well, but, okay, but you, faggot. But you, the gay community has disowned Milo. They have disowned him. They so haven't it's, disowned it's okay. YMS, though, and he's, he's on the You know, you're right. Page. What's Fair more point. offensive to YMS, calling him a faggot or calling or questioning the fact that he needs someone else to edit his incredibly lazily edited quickies? <laughs> YMS, please fire your quickie editor. Uh, get somebody who and can make them. And stop making quickies. No, I was kidding. Well, just uh, like the guy is editing them as though he's trying to make the worst YouTube video. I mean, they could be a lot better. They're they're not great, <laughs> so, the one okay. I saw. So I think that on this particular, like, slippery slope of, like, these words, gay and retarded, I think retard is a little bit easier to justify because, if you can Google it, the second definition is delay or hold back in terms of progress, development, God damn it, Devo, but everyone knows so, like, what you mean when you say retarded. No one's using that well, definition. Well, 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 hold on, okay, though, okay. because I actually, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm a little bit more literally minded than average, but Possibly. <laughs> I kind of think of the word retarded as like, I, I tend to think of like stupidity, you know, people whose brains aren't sure, right. sure. sure. But if you like, if you, there's like a fan and you stop the fan with your fingers and then you start moving the fan in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. you are retarding the blades of the fan, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like, retarded does kind of also mean well, like something Devu, is backwards. You're, you're absolutely like right. That, th th that word does, in fact, have a basically socially acceptable definition. It but but like here's the thing, though. It's just, if I, call you, uh, uh, if I call you a faggot, like, there's really no way around the fact that that's simply right. an offensive well, well, yeah, word. So now, now, now going to gay, yeah. the thing about gay is that the thing that we're really referring to is something that, like, I think those, those words kind of... The gay is getting its new meaning because of a thing that... 
is more commonly colloquially attributed to gay individuals is kind of the isn't reason, that discrimination right? we, to do that then that is I think it like it has a little bit more of like a discriminatory or a little bit more like stereotypical origin in yeah. it right yeah. even though you recognize it's not all gay people but it's it's like certain traits that you can often see stereotypically at least in gay men. Most you know, I, I think so. Th- but then, but then the, sort of the, a lot of people meaning. use mm-hmm. the word "gay," me included, as just like bad. Yeah, right, even though yeah, I don't yeah. feel that way about I, anything I th- homosexual. I think what a lot of people forget when it comes to like stereotypes and stuff is that we as human beings like to be a part of something. We like mm-hmm. to be right. stereotyped. We want if it's something that we actually feel connected to, like you know, b- there's a reason that like black comedians constantly talk about being black, like because. It's they they've taken which elements of like the the stereotypical black experience people want to identify themselves with and like claimed it. They've been like, yeah, this is what black people are because we like that and we want to be this way. At like, least for yeah, the bit. Got, At least my, for my, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my my dick is big. My my you know uh, what's mm-hmm. the line that Kendrick sings in Black or the Berry? Like that whole song is him like rattling off all the yeah, like yeah. black cliches that like black culture has tried to embrace and be like this is the positive image we want of ourselves like yeah okay we'll we'll invite some of the dumb shit too yeah watermelon and chicken whatever everybody likes those things that's not <laughs> offensive to say that we like I, those you know, things I don't really care all that you much know? for watermelon although I will well, say just I like the other day I saw watermelon. a little black girl chasing a chicken around <laughs> that was kind of offensive uh, is there such a thing as inner blackface because I think you've got it Digi you I definitely this. have inner I've got <laughs> some <laughs> kind of weird he totally does. concoction <laughs> <laughs> I, I only interpret the world through black Black and Japanese media. Like all yeah, I consume yeah. is black and Japanese media. So I don't even know what white people are up to because I can't <laughs> listen to country. I can't do it. Like <laughs> did, did you ask? You ever heard? But me, but me, Hippo and, and uh, Ben had a conversation on a reference calculator about how y'all is a black a, a black word that I y'all is just I a southern that. word. Y'all, no, ev- yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. in the south well, yeah, says but, y'all. But but all but all southern did people it... are black now. Well, Wait, okay, what? Well, okay, <laughs> sure. On. Um, you know, Thomas Sowell doesn't just uh, doesn't just do things in economics. He also does Black History shit, right? He has a book okay. called. It's a stupid title, but it's but uh, it was actually fucking reviewed by Better Than Food book reviews. Uh, Black rednecks and white liberals, in mm. which like his findings is that the Southern culture and Southern accent all got sparked by Northern Britain. Like, those are the ones who moved to the South in America, and that's where the accent evolved into the Southern accent. That's funny. And then that Southern accent and Southern sensibilities were taken, were then, you know, that's where most of the black slaves were, and then they immigrated northwards, and then that's where sort of the modern racism situation began. So what you're telling me is that Gibb is a slaveholder. That's what I'm hearing, right? Southern... UK. I'm southern. Like He's not oh, a northern, shit. Well, right? yeah. and in most countries, I mean, north is where the yeah, fucking boondocks are. The, the, the funny thing about like the this. east coast is that it's it, like, especially with black people, it's all very interconnected, and there's lots of emigration around. Like most of the people I knew in Virginia, <sighs> be, like in Virginia, period, were from New York, and like. So, so people constantly, like, transport, like, between the South, like, Georgia and Virginia, where the cost of living is a lot lower than New York, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. New York's, like, crazy overpopulated, and, like, the cost of living is insanely high to have, like, a tiny shithole apartment. So, like, people who can only afford to live in, like, a one-room apartment in New York will just, like, get all their shit together into a fucking car and just, like, abandon as much as they can and just hail Mary down South when they have kids so that they can raise their kids in a house. So so, like, that's where literally, like, half of all the black people in the South, like, come from. It's just, like, New Yorkers who flee down to have kids. And then, eventually, a lot of those kids go back up to New York because they need jobs, you know? Is this, like, the fucking penguins or certain, like, breeds of fish that, like, yeah. go back and forth for mating seasons? Yeah. Is that what we are? Uh, is that what American know, thinks what... of its black people is penguins? I mean, it's not just black people, but that's just, like, the majority of who's in, like, the boroughs in, in New York. You know, like, white people are doing the same shit, but it's just poor. The poor are doing this. I can't believe it. We're fucking penguins. This is like the biggest revelation. This Happy week, feet I, uh, I, is our future. Hey, listen. There's one I, more area I wanted to talk about. Uh, Munchie, did you want to chime in? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Think, I have a thing to say about self censorship. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Yeah, sure. me too. Actually, uh, no, uh, I censor I, you uh, <laughs> yourself. I, so no. I walk outside, and every single day when I'm interacting with literally any of my family, mm. all it is is like self censorship. That's yeah, all yeah. it is. I do not. I. 
there, there's this line in a Sam Hyde, like, one-off, like, vlog mm-hmm. that is just meant to be funny, but has hit home for me and made me cry on certain occasions. Oh, boy. Where, where is it, says, uh, we are going to create a community for people just like us, brothers. It's going to be called Giorgio Land, and I am a white nationalist. Is that is that the line you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that is it. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> its sister line is, my mom would hate me if she knew what I was really like. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, I I just want to say like um about all all like self censorship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, this, there it is. It's happening right that. now. I'm I'm trying to get the words out, but I won't let me. Um, I like I reserve. I like the idea that um you can say stuff like the n word instead of nig mm-hmm. because uh it like like just because you are okay with it. And just because people around you probably will be okay with it doesn't mean you have to go as hard as possible every time. Sure, sure. I think it's okay to be, like, I don't want to be called out as a bitch if I say the N-word. Yeah. I think that's I just as okay as insult, saying nigger. Like, I think it's fine if people are uncomfortable with saying the word because they legitimately don't use it. Like, like, yeah. like, uh, like someone like Anthony Fantano, he never says it, even if it's in, like, an album title. Like, but it's because he just, he's never yeah. been someone who says nigga. So, like, he he knows it would be forced if he started now. Like, he's been avoiding it his whole life. Why would he suddenly start, you know? You know, th- that, that's a reasonable point. The reason why I disagree, and I, I deliberately dislike when people avoid saying the world, is because that really, that that is the vicious cycle of keeping yeah. the word, like, in this weird state no, of no one I, can say it. Yeah. yeah. I do yeah. call out, I actually dis like, I've said in the past, mm-hmm. like, I think he's a bitch for not saying it when it's in an album title because i'm like to me that's being ridiculous it's like you're you're like you're you're so obsessed with following the rules that the supposed rules that you can't just like literally call the thing by its goddamn name that they gave it you know like it's not disrespectful to call it by the name that they gave it there was there was a time i i I was at karaoke in seattle one day and i uh i was i was doing some some singing and i was singing um some uh, some fucking Kanye song. I can't remember what it was. It was the, it was like the closer for the night. I go up there. I'm busting it out. Like the the DJ guy is this big old black friendly fellow. I'm singing it out. We get to this part where I bust out. Uh, sub the sub the nigga. We uh, we lock eyes. He gives me a smile and a firm nod, Hell and then yeah. I keep going on. It was <laughs> I've had that exact moment. experience during karaoke when I was doing um yeah because my, I was I was at, at a karaoke bar with my one of my black friends was there and him and the other black guy who just happened to be at the bar like teamed up to do a Kendrick Lamar song because mm-hmm. you know. Hi, everyone. Every if you would know anything black, then you must be a fan of Kendrick Lamar. It's just like the rules right now, basically in culture. So, yeah. so these guys both get on stage to do "Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe," but I <laughs> immediately detect that neither of these guys actually knows the words, but I do. So I get up oh, there uh, and yeah, I'm like uh-huh. gonna do the actual rap parts. You know, for these guys, and I'm sitting there, and like I'm saying "nigga," and I see the dude. I can tell the dude who doesn't know me for like one second's like, "Hold up, did that white dude just say nigga?" But then he's like, "Then again, he knows you know, all the words, and neither of us do. Yeah, so who's the yeah, realest right. nigga up here for real, though? Right? right? And, and you, you, know, know? you know what? Okay, look, I'm just gonna like make an assumption here. Maybe other people like can confirm this. If I'm a black guy and I hear some white person say nigger, I might perk up because maybe they're racist or maybe they're chill, right? And you have to, like, yeah, worry about that, that's true. right? You know? like I, I, It's just yeah. unfortunate that we're in a situation where the words are this, you know, ugh, intense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what if, oh, what if we said the nigger word? Is great. The that's good. Word. Oh, that's that good. would be awesome. Oh, uh, by, by the way, the song was Runaway I was singing. That's what it was. <clears throat> it was oh. nigger yeah, one dude, time. Like, um, one time. R- uh, Digi, remember Matthew Matosis' review of Bioshock Infinite where, like, it's supposed to be this society where people are racist against blacks, but yeah. they never go farther than saying negro. Or <laughs> yeah, he literally worst. was like, like, shouldn't they be saying nigger all the time? Like, Because that... that because if you if you don't let them use the word nigger, then you're like you're making you're whitewashing it. You're making it look better. less shit than it was. And like yeah, and honestly, if you're a person who gets upset when white people say nigger, but not black people as much, all yeah. I can imagine is like an old timey 1950s photograph with a couple of fucking water faucets. There's a nice one that says the words for white people. Only you can only use prim and proper words if you're a white person. Then down here at the little dingy water fountain. That's the ones that the colored people can say. They can say words like nigger if they wish, right? That's what I see. It's fucking uh, I, I vocabulary hear segregation. All right. Hey, you, but, ready wait, for, by, by you guys way, ready look, for a big call out? 
You want me to? Yes. You want me to call somebody out on the show? Oh jeez. Yes. I'm ready. Okay. Right. I'm ready. So so this is also this debate. This very debate is a thing in the black community because mm. of the fact that Quentin Tarantino wrote Django oh, Unchained. Yeah. Right. S- right. <laughs> Spike yeah. Lee is not okay with this. Spike Lee, oh, who's yes. like the blackest yeah. d- director ever, you know. Um, <laughs> He made he's made all kinds of fucking great movies. He made a what's the fucking one that Jesse loves? Nate, you know it, right? Glorious Bastards. Uh, no, Pulp the Fiction, Spike Lee fucking... movie. Uh, oh, so, oh, oh uh, uh, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Yeah, um, yeah. And like he directed Kings of Comedy, all this other shit. He he has a real problem with Quentin Tarantino saying <laughs> you know like writing nigger into his scripts. Yeah, yeah. And he called out Samuel L. Jackson. For being in the movie, he was oh, like, I, like, I, like, he's oh, like, no. yo, I'm not okay with that. Samuel Jackson was like, look, like, this is real shit, and he said, he said, <laughs> Samuel Jackson said, you think I'm gonna pass up the opportunity to play the most hated black character in cinema history? <laughs> like, yeah. no, I'm taking <laughs> it, you know. But like, it's like, just what are you trying to do, Spike Lee? Are you trying to make it seem like the the racist slave holding American South? wasn't offensive enough to say nigger? I, like, what I, I mean, what Spike Lee is trying to at do At the end is, of the day, yeah, here's yeah. what I think it comes down to. Yeah. Like, I understand why there are some people who are uncomfortable with the message of Tarantino's film and why, like, they would think it's not okay for him to write this movie. But, like... I don't like. I don't see how those people cannot understand yeah. that there are other black people who will be like, "No, this is actually exactly what I wanted. This is totally vindicating, and I love it." Right. Which is how a lot of my black friends were about the movie. Like, literally, yeah. my friend Marcus was a black guy who didn't really say nigga much until he watched Django ah! and then started saying nigga all the time. Like, and oh he literally attributed it to the movie. Like, that was <laughs> so. That's the kind of shit that is actually happening in the world. This is real. That was a I, real story I just told you, and, and, and like and I, you have to think about that when you talk about this shit. You got to think about yeah, the black yeah. guy who watched that movie and felt so like. I mean, I don't know what that means about him, and maybe some people will be like, "Oh, I'm not okay with that being like how the youth are feeling." But like, look, that's just what it is. Like this dude came from Virginia Beach. He was raised weird because he had to go to speech therapy when he was young, so he talks white, and like people picked up on that and didn't really include him and so he hung out with me and anime nerds and learned how to do kung fu and became jacked and joined the army like this is the kind of people who exist we got to think about everyone who exists when we talk about who can say what words and what they mean to who you know yeah. right you know when i like i i feel that in oh, myself I forgot my call out though uh my call out is Spike nino Lee? My no, oh. my call out is Nino who jumped on my song White Nigga to help make this point. But then mm-hmm. he came back later and he got famous on Black Twitter and started work writing for a fucking Huffington Post. And uh, what? Nino is doing this? Yeah, Nino writes for HuffPo uh, on like oh. their black site, like their their does like he do the same thing their like black YouTube interest write, like, one page. Five months. Yeah, okay. Uh, Point okay. being that because he started like hanging out with them, he's all like, "Oh well, now I now I'm not like about white people saying nigga no more." Like, uh, and I was just like, "Oh, you fucking hmm. cunt, you nigger, get out of here!" And so that, that, there you go. Whatever you know, when you talk about like what, what's up with the double standard and people like people who are very explicit about it, like Movie Bob will say. Dude, slavery is why. The countries that we are living in right now did these things that underprivileged certain colors and overprivileged others. That's the reason there's a double standard. Because when you go to it on an individual basis, it seems like the double standard comes from someone who went to fucking college or got a job in media. Like, or got a fucking liberal girlfriend. You know, honestly, uh, I don't have much to say on this point, except that uh, I just wanted to say that, like, uh, like Digi, like, uh, well, I don't not, I don't not burn with a seething rage at how, how like, lucky black people are. They get to say the word nigga. Yeah, I, I don't burn with that, but it is I don't, a I don't real feel part. that way either. I, I'm I just, not saying I that I want to clarify that the reason that I feel so strongly about this is simply that this word has always been in my head. And to me, it's like, it's so (laughs) ludicrous to be like, oh, like... Everything you like has always had this in it. Like you've you've That's, the movies you grew up on, the music you listen to, just like everyone else, it's the same reason black people use the word. Is yeah. they hear it I, all the time. So that's I heard it all the time. And but it's like 
it's literally discrimination to look at someone and be like, oh, well, you might have grown up with this word just like anybody else, but because your skin color is different, you can't say it. I, you I know? completely agree, and that was my point. My One of my favorite shows of all time is The Boondocks, and I know 100% without a doubt it is due to my love for The Boondocks and the excessive yeah. use of the word nigga that I started <laughs> yeah. to incorporate it into my daily Literally, speech. when I was 12, oh, oh. I read all of the comics this, of The this Boondocks. Is, this is what I would call the good kind of cultural approach appropriation like i developed an appreciation yeah. for hip-hop as a result of watching the boondocks and yeah. like i got introduced to just like more black characters expanded yeah. my my interest I, so i would like, say that like because of the yeah. fact all cultural appropriation is good except for like really tacky cultural appropriation i, yeah, I think I don't that because really of the fact that like black culture has so much like meta text to it and that like mm -hmm. that the boondocks is specifically about exploring that like when yeah. you watch that as someone like me who's got, like, a very categorical brain where, like, I memorize all the names and connections between things like I do with the anime industry. But, like, mm -hmm. with black culture, because it's so self-referential and everybody's, like, playing off of each other all the time, like, when you start studying that, it's involving in the same way that, like, anime is. And that's why I end up, like... Like, all my favorite shows that aren't anime are, like, The Boondocks in Atlanta and, like, other shit like that. Because, like, it's almost a narrative I'm keeping up with of, like, what's going on with the blacks, you know? Yeah, like, uh, well, okay. I, I just want to make the point that, like, it just simply is part of my human experience to, like, use the word nigga, for example. And I just want people to know that if you tell me that I can't do that, that's... I, I understand your perspective, but it's not that I'm just burning to use it. It's just you're simply telling me to not be who I am. So if you're comfortable yeah. doing that, that's fine. Like, you can make that argument, yeah. but that's why I strongly disagree with that point. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I the, the only other thing I want to talk about was I wanted to just, just, just to cover for the sake of clarity, you always got to touch on the private versus public... Like, censorship, legality, like, what, you get banned on Twitter. Is this censorship? Is this, you know, fucking, is, is that violating yeah. free speech? Like, what's, you know what's what? the deal here? I think, I, yeah. I think that, like, obviously, Twitter's, a, a, they're a company who can do whatever yeah. they want. But, like, I do wish that there was, like, a protected version of Twitter. Because I think Twitter, mm -hmm. weirdly, is, like, a resource the world needs like, I think it's proven that, like, the amount of, like, for, like I mean, the entire fucking Arab Spring happened because of Twitter. Like, what the fuck? Like, hmm. it's, it's so <laughs> yeah. important to, like, disaster relief efforts and stuff. Like, there should be, like, right. an open public highway version of Twitter that, like... Yeah, and, and it should be of, and it should be for everybody. Like you shouldn't be able to get banned from it. You know. Well, that's the thing about corporations in general is that uh, this is something that libertarians because there should be really no money tied. Have... Sorry, yeah, just mm -hmm. there should be no like, corporate interest tied into it, so that people can have unpopular opinions, and it's not going to affect anyone's business interest. Is why I want it to be it, like, well, yeah. you know. But like, okay, so like th that's the thing about like corporations in general, and this is something that libertarians are they they really need to like get themselves fucking woke on this. They really need to address this. That the whole reason we came up with free government, the whole reason we came up with the idea of rights is because we entered an age where we were approaching industry, where governments were able to have a level of organized power that they could really micromanage and fuck with people's lives. No one would have come up with the constitution in like 5000 BC, right? So for the same reason, we are now entering a society where things are so interconnected that corporations are able to do a very similar thing. Like, even though it's all technically voluntary, the mm -hmm. level of control they can have over society is getting pretty fucking thick, and it's getting harder and harder for me to justify it as simply they're a private company, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's like if you yeah, don't use yeah Twitter, that's like the where argument where people you? are arguing, like, are Twitter and Facebook, like, are they at the point where they're becoming, like, public utilities? Public right. Because utilities. They're becoming that's so... the issue. That's the issue. Right. So there like, you what go. if someone still made the argument that, like, well, you know, the internet's run by private companies, so, like, I, it, it right. took... There was a point where we decided that, like, telephones were a public utility. Because, right, like, right. It, an inventor made it, and then it became popular, and then they made a utility. And then I think the same happened with the right. internet. And, uh, like, uh, it's just... I, I really think a lot about this. Like, what's the right balance? We, I have no interest in, like, dictating exactly to a company what to do to pursue their profit motive. That's, that's their business, and that's totally fine. But on the other side, when you're in the business of, like, allowing people to communicate, it becomes 
like if if Twitter is actually causing society to splinter down the middle into like a more divided society, that is not good. And the question is how to address that. Like social media really seems to just have done this straight up. So I like, what's really the fix? Agree. I don't. You mean like politically? You mean like I, political I mean politically, opinions? yes, and along like ideological lines. See, people and... always say like, "Oh man, fucking, um, you know, social media is gonna make it to where you only get articles and headlines that you agree with." And I, I get fucking ha ha. Here's what Trump did this week, like all over the damn place to this day. So I don't know like if this isn't working on me, but personally, in my experience, I've seen it as it's making people more aware. Of what other sides are saying than ever before. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. I I have the exact same experience as you, where I constantly have friends who are both super lip cuck and all full of conservative gods. uh, (laughs) Yeah. uh, All the issues. It's just Trump is bad or Trump is good. Uh, But I I think think the um, problem is, is that most people do not have. Uh, people who are like, they don't have a, a varied taste in friends. Yeah, you? they get into the bubble right. of people who agree with them. Yeah, maybe they yeah they get into their bubble because it, it, it's really Which stressful. We all do. But I think ultimately, I think the internet still like even in your bubble, you're gonna see things eep through. The algorithms are not perfect, and I just think that like people are more aware than ever. If you go to an extreme opposite end. 500 years ago, people with opposite political opinions lived in a different country <laughs> past a border and maybe a sea or two yeah. and didn't even know them. You, the only chance you would have to conflict with them is up the broad side of a sword in a battle, right? But now we actually are much more aware of other worldviews you know? that, like, uh, yeah, that we yeah. wouldn't have known about. And it stresses us out, but it moves society forward. You know, like, it like, forces I, us all to hear one another. I feel at least a bit. Like, I, like right now, I love being alive now because I get Get to listen to like uh, I'll listen to fucking like uh, Ben Shapiro, then like the Young Turks, and then I'll like listen to something Stefan Molyneux says. Yeah, then I'll go listen to like fucking uh, Sam Harris, Kyle Kalinsky. Fucking I'll listen to like the same video about the same topic from like Spoiling five, six sources. I can't and then do that shit. It, that it's it bores me I would to never, tears. I would drive me it just, nuts. I put it on in the background like while I'm working, so I just it fills the time. Well, and that, and by doing that, I feel like I'm finally getting closer to like I know everyone's biases because I've I've listened yeah. to all these people a long time. And now yeah. I know, like, okay, Stefan Molyneux is, like, insanely dedicated to, like, protecting children to, like, kind of a crazy degree. I'm not calling him crazy. Yeah. But, like, so, like, he's got huge biases. He hates big government. He, you know, logically see, has deducted that, like, government is evil. Got to get rid of it. Like, okay, that's his bias. The Young Turks, have, have you, super yeah, left-wing, a little really bit SJW. That. You keep all that bias brings oh. to the table. All of internet yeah. I- interaction and all trying to deduce the truth from politics. Yeah. It's just like an yeah. eight, like a times eight or more Venn diagram mm. where you have to mm. have yeah. everyone's bubble all lined up. And then the That's stuff right. in the nice. middle you know, that everyone has in common is the truth. I, I, mean, I think yeah, that – I think about Stefan Molyneux real quick. Like, like the Stefan Molyneux thing. Yeah. Um, have you heard – I think he's probably – you've probably heard him talk about his audio book. Uh, universally preferable behavior. I, I've never listened to it, but I've heard about it. I yeah. recommend it to you because it's basically him trying to derive an, a sense of objective morality yeah, it's, through <laughs> like just logic. It's just I what I'm into. Yeah, like you, yeah. I feel like utilitarians would. It would be your. I, I can never quite get through it because he. I feel like I'm finally ready to try and listen to all of it because he's basically it's him trying to solve the problem with no one being able to agree on morality. Right. So right. I don't know. I'm gonna check I, it I, out. I, I want to listen to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you fucking. I didn't expect you to go on about that audiobook, and it made me forget what the fuck point I was going to try to make. Well, shit. About biases? Um, something to do with. Oh, th- that, 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 I don't think the mm-hmm. problem is that we, we get into like a bubble and only listen to a few voices. It's that those voices are not good or are untrustworthy. Okay. Yes. That, like, sure. There's too many voices that. Like, I, th- there's a reason that I've come to where like the only like politicized YouTuber who I really follow is Razor Fist, and it's not because I agree with everything he says. It's mm-hmm. because I trust him to do the most research. That every video he yeah. does, mm-hmm. he will have looked at everything. He knows the names of everyone in the government. He knows like what they're doing. He knows their histories. He knows what's happening. He doesn't listen to the media and what they're saying. He waits until there is real information that he can use. And he almost always comes out like if he said something was going to happen, it usually happens because you know, the, the, he's keeping track of what's going on better and, than anybody. And like and the world is not that hard to understand. You just need yeah, to know right. all the information. The, and the he problem does. with like the Young Turks yeah. and Kyle Kalinske to a degree, a lot of these guys who do day 
daily multiple episodes of yeah, the show. They they want to yeah. produce content as fast as possible, and I don't think any of them have bad intention. But it's their business model that that puts them in a position right. of, of Razor doing Fist. That. Fundamentally, the reason why he has the luxury to be fucking informed is that he's not a political YouTuber. He talks yeah. about video games and heavy metal, mm -hmm. and he only makes a, a, a statement on politics when he has a statement that he's actually pretty confident in and yeah. can look cool making. And but I mean, <laughs> yeah, watch sure. someone like yeah, some, yeah. someone else like, who like their their job every morning is to get up and like put on their spin to make them make their side look good. It's just fucking. I'll, sad. I'll tell you right now that while I'm happy this hasn't happened, if like Super Bunny Hop ever became a political oh, no. guy. He would be one of the only people I'd listen to because yeah. I know he'll Level do all the research. research. I yeah. know he'll come yeah. in with yeah. all the info. He'll never open his mouth about it if he if he didn't. You know, because, I, I have a yeah, yeah like, and, and like that's why I have so much respect for both of those guys as as like journalists on YouTube because I think that we're in an era now where magazines are just straight up irrelevant. And because yeah, of the fact dude. that none of them know how to adapt to YouTube because they're all fucking retarded, we have we as YouTubers have to figure out how to make journalism possible on the platform. And like those two guys are the only people who I know of who I consider like serious, respectable journalists who I can trust mm -hmm. to have done all the research and I know they're going to tell me facts, you know? Dude, dude, Dr. Wolf watches the episode before he reports <laughs> on it. <laughs> he goes deep. He goes deep. <laughs> 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 Hashtag integrity. Uh, um, <laughs> Dr. Wolf always gets a laugh. I want to my self-censorship real quick before we close out. You okay. Because when Digi talked about him and his, his childhood, <laughs> I really wanted to just share my piece. But mm -hmm. we went on a different course. So I'll, I'll just let, let things ease down now. So, you know, having like Christian non-sweary parents. Parents who, I want to put it on the record, will say like nigger if we're talking about the word. Like they'll say it out of context. Sure, okay. They'll say racial words out of context, but they'll never say fuck or shit out of context. Right? Hmm, and I'm just interesting. like, no, that's a little bit bullshit. That's a little bit bullshit anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and then also like being homeschooled and put into sort of like a really tight Christian bubble of like various like kids who also have Christian parents. So there was just... Unlike Digi, not really ever surrounded by uh, swear words, right? Mm -hmm. And not having watched adult content as a child. So, like, it took me a while to even learn what all the swear words were, actually. And, like, you know, when I was, like, you know, seven or eight or so. And then, by the time I'm around 13, I start getting into more, like, I start watching, like, South Park or Family Guy and stuff like that. Just completely of my own volition, because my parents, like, don't even, barely even watch much TV at this point. Let's just watch Fox News, actually. <laughs> and then all the fucking <laughs> cop drama shows. Uh, but so then, like, you know, I'll be watching, like, South Park, right? And then my dad will be like, oh, what you watching? I'm watching South Park, you know? And he's like, hmm, you know? And I know exactly what to tell him to, to like, to shut him off, right? Right? Which is, oh, don't worry. I'm not going to go around swearing like they do in South Park. And he's like, okay, I guess that's fine, you know? And then, like, maybe I'll be showing some episodes to Aaron, who my brother, who at this point would be, like, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And, like... My dad would be like, hmm, I don't know about it. You know, I'm like, hey, Aaron's like, don't worry. Neither of us are going to swear. Don't worry. We're not going to do it, you know? And he's like, well, okay, as long as you promise to not be like those violent cartoons, and then you can totally do it. So what happened was, as we get older, by the time we're, like, adults, or, like, uh, he's almost an adult, we no longer, like, give a single shit. Like, we are perfectly fine to swear on one another because we do not care anymore, except for the fact that we've promised to not swear as a result of watching sweary cartoons and we're both filled with pride over it. We have so much ego on the line to prove to our father that we're not going to break the promise. <laughs> not out of like loyalty, but just to prove that we're yeah, that we're This cool is exactly the line. We, this is we, the exact logic that me and Victor were right. on. Right. And exactly hmm. like Digi, we came up with our own like swear genre. So, for example, we started using um, van as a swear word, right? Like, what the van is going on here? Like, yeah. what, are you vanning kidding me, right? So we came up with that as a swear because we were think we were talking about, like, old actors. I think maybe we were even talking about Mary Poppins. And we, were, we brought up Dick Van Dyke. And we <laughs> thought, you know, <laughs> if, Dick, if van were a bad word, Dick Van Dyke's entire name would be bad See, word. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to go with uh, Jean-Claude <laughs> Van Damme. 
to avoid saying the word damn. Oh, that, that, that would, works that too, would, but okay. That would apply right, as well. Right. But just, you know, but Dick Van Dyke Dick Van is a little Dyke. bit clearer. So there you go. So Van, uh, we just started saying Van as a swear. We, we, I think we gave it like a couple years of runtime before it like really wore out its welcome and just made us cringe. And then that's just when we started swearing. I, I'm, cu I'm curious to boo. On the subject of like made up swear words like that, did your parents ever object to like, not the word, but like sort of the tone that you say the word with? Like, hey, I know what you're doing there, buddy. You're trying to get something past me by saying a completely, literally inoffensive word, but it's your tone that's the swear being said. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Earlier when I talked oh, about the inappropriate fuck? and overreacting, it's all about Dude, tone and shit. It, he yeah. wouldn't like insanity. You know, he wouldn't like punish me. Or well, sure, sure. No matter how young I was, what, but it was just sort of like, oh, it's like just interesting. Tone, Once you know? again, my yeah. mind is being torn apart by the breadth of the realization that this is just what the '90s was. Like, this isn't unique mm. to our households because this is the entire logic that <clears throat> humankind underwent up until the 2000s and here's what i mean do you any of you remember i don't know if you were still watching cartoon network at all at the time when regular show came alive. out uh, i know munch you <laughs> yeah, will remember i wasn't, I wasn't I'm not, do, i don't really do you, I can call myself a 90s kid this was all 2000s do, for do you guys mm. remember the first time on regular show that they said piss no i don't did anybody oh, don't see know. that was that like groundbreaking it, to me it was because okay. they okay, okay on on Adventure Time. First of all, kids are they saying suck on cartoons yes, that's now? That's literally they said suck on Steven Universe yes, the other day. Exactly. What the fuck? So, so they they started saying okay, Adventure Time broke the seal Whoa. on saying sucks and like dang it and heck and stuff like that. Like they were able to say that shit. Then regular they said show kill came too. along. Kill. Yeah, yeah, they could say I most kill and die. That they would say and they used mm -hmm. that a lot. They like really went yeah. in on the fact There's that like you could. There's like a whole could, regular show episode about die. Yeah, and then there's yeah. In regular show, they started saying piss off. They started hey, uh, saying uh, they started question. saying hell. Like is the idea behind the word suck, like suck dick. Is that like where yeah, yeah. Uh, or suck okay. cunt? Because then you know you have feminists it's, on it. There, I guess we're gonna have to have a whole we're gonna okay. have to have a whole fucking debate yeah. on that. We're it's funny, but it was it's just funny. The, yeah. because you, you you could you couldn't say you you couldn't say suck, but you could say dick? that something blows, yeah. even though they're literally that, the same that is thing. true. But the, that is true. The the, the the fucking <laughs> thing about it is I literally watched them physically move the Overton window like a yeah. boulder like Sisyphus pushing it up the hill like cuz you can you can right. look at the 80s and see that like there was a period where cartoons were a lot more violent and crazy cuz like GI mm -hmm. Joe was the yeah. biggest thing and Transformers and all that shit and and then you go to the 90s and they cleaned it all up no one there's like right. no guns anymore no one can say kill no one can like you know do this or that Wait, and then you I, get to the, tw the i definitely like, remember bart simpson saying that sucks well th simpsons was different and that was why simpsons was so popular was that it was like a counterbalance to because it yeah. aired on primetime right. tv on wb it was not a kids show you know that's the thing this is not huh. this is not like it always gets less censorship it's an ebb and flow you see an old cartoon yeah. characters can fucking drink alcohol and be drunk and now, speaking of The Simpsons, we're, we might be entering an era where it's too problematic to have a white person voice a non-white character, or vice versa. The, the, the thing about, like, both, both America and Japan are very particular about time slots as being, like, the definition of what can and cannot pass. So, like, right, right. primetime TV, like, even, even with Adventure Time and regular show, the reason those shows could get away with that is that they usually aired in the afternoon, and it was more of, like, an older, like, like the, the, the kids who were, like, 10 to 15 watched during that time, you know, as opposed to the really little kids who they're going to like just show nothing but Teen Titans Go to you all morning because that's like the, Teen Titans Go is the only show they've ever made that is not only great, but also like it's so mind numbingly colorful that kids can just stare at it all day. So that's all they air through the morning. But like. You know, as they moved to, like, younger and younger shows using these words, even Teen Titans Go is going to say these words now, you know, like, mm, mm, even true. the stuff they're showing to little kids, because, like, just nobody cares anymore. Like, now that we have the internet, you cannot protect kids from bad words anymore. Like, it's just fucking impossible, unless you really are a strict parent, you know? But, like... It's like, we can't lie to ourselves any longer. And why did we ever do it in the first place? We all look like idiots. I, I think religious reasons. I think a lot of this came from yeah. our, like... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah? I have to tell you guys, the one last fucking fake square I came up okay. with, when me, me and my brother did, wasn't really a... Well, it was more like... It was actually an all-new innovation in the whole medium of language itself. So, my brother... He just started saying Shih Tzu, you know, the breed of dog. <laughs> oh, Shih Tzu, oh, man. Or even my fiance, she likes to say Shetland Pony, right? But yeah, Shih Tzu, ah, oh, Shih Tzu, you know. 
And then we were like, ah, oh, shit, Sue. And then sometimes we delayed it. Ah, oh, shit. Sue. Oh, you're pushing the edge right. there, boy. You're getting ready right, for right, a right. beat. Oh, oh, piss oh, you have these no antics. idea. Oh, you, oh, that's just the beginning. Then we were like, wait a second. We were just like, ah, oh, shit, Sue. Ah, oh, shit, Sue. Wait a second. Fuck. Sue. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> We're like, and we, we have oh, this, like, oh. agreement. You know, it's all arbitrary, right? Yeah. Agre like, language, it's all arbitrary. The fact that yeah. fuck is offensive in the first place is arbitrary. It was just made up. No one's going to be around to challenge this. We hereby declare that you could swear as many fucking goddamn mother shitting cunt blocking times as you want as long as you say sue within that any length of time afterwards. <laughs> I like it. So sometimes we just be like, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck off me, you shithead. Sue, <laughs> we just did that for two straight years, being like, we're still doing it. We still have our pride that we are not swearing. You're a fucking genius. Just like we promised our dad. I like that. <laughs> That's creativity at work. Uh, so, have we figured anything out here? Have we answered the question no. of is free speech uh, think, cool think, or is I it gay? What we've, no, what we've learned is that we can just say nigger Sue and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's all arbitrary. Well, it's a bunch of bullshit. Uh, let hashtag let children swear. Uh, that's where yeah. I'm at. That's where I'm at with well, this. What we've learned is that we've already heard all of these complaints yeah, and yeah, things you're before right. on all of our other shows, <laughs> and this has uh, bred no new conversation whatsoever. Uh, Ag agreed, uh, indeed. Yeah. Agreed. But it was I hope yeah. good. I hope you listen to this podcast while doing something well, productive, fans, uh, you know, friends and family out there. That's what I do when I listen to podcasts. Let me talk about my 4chan uncle, because yeah. I'm, in a, I'm in an interesting situation with my 4chan uncle. Hmm. Uh, as, you, as you all know, I have an uncle. He goes on 4chan. Oh, no. the name. <laughs> a deadly combination. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, he's, he's always downstairs at my house now because he's a deadbeat for various other reasons. But mostly he's a deadbeat. And so I'm walking downstairs, and he always tries to rope me in conversations about, mm. you know, Hitler and the Jews, no matter how he's oh, doing no. harassment campaigns. You wouldn't, you wouldn't censor like his free speech by not listening no, to never. him. Now, would you, Munchie? Okay, no, good. I would never censor his free speech, but I censor my own free speech. Because right, the entire right. reason that he is talking to me in the first place, he's always just been in a, you know, in a, in a stupor, and he doesn't really talk to anyone. But I, but I have... Uh, Outed myself as someone who knows what 4chan is. Oh no! And now oh, no. he always wants to talk oh, to me, no. and so I sense myself. You can't I unring this bell. To him. <laughs> exactly. I I can't explain to him that I don't believe these same things or you know do any of this stuff. I just know what 4chan mm. is. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to sense myself and just go along with whatever political opinion is. So uh, I, mostly because I'm just a coward. That's the only reason that uh, this is happening. Sounds like a hassle. A yeah, I don't know. You want to yeah. save space at home. We all want to save yeah. space at home. I don't want exactly. to be challenged with scary so, 4chan ideas. <laughs> I, I, I'm in this bizarre dichotomy where whenever I'm around my mom's, uh, my, my mom, it's like, yeah, I fucking hate Trump and you know, fucking whatever. Hey, is <laughs> dinner ready soon, by the way? And also, and, and then whenever I'm with my uncle, I'm like, yeah, fucking I want to suck Trump's dick looking pretty dangly right there. I want to... <laughs> Uh, but also, uh, hey, can you yeah. take me out to lunch real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Playing him like a fiddle, uh, Munchie, Munchie. I was, yeah. was going to say, like, having, yeah, having, you know, pretty, pretty, not like hard line, but firm line, you know, strict conservative <laughs> Christian type people as parents, and then also being an art person on the internet, I've gotten, like, pretty good at, like, spinning whatever I want to say to be mm -hmm. palatable to both people. Like, oh, 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 like, me and, like, my fiance were, like, at dinner with my both my parents and like we were actually talking about Stefan Molyneux's peaceful parenting paradigm system that he's created which is all about like don't spank kids don't even yell at kids don't even punish them use reason logic and whatever the fuck which I'm really interested in right but I know that if I say to my parents the idea is to never spank kids, especially my mom is going to immediately perk up and be like, <laughs> no, right? So I'm like trying to avoid saying that right. to them. But then like my, my fiance does anyway. She's like, yeah, the idea is to never spank kids. And my mom goes, <laughs> try getting that to work on every kid you have. <laughs> um, Davu was abused. Uh, that's what we've learned here today. Um, thank Should you for listening. Should we move to listening. questions? I... Uh, I I want to say one last Please. thing. Okay. My my favorite thing to do in Super Smash mm. Brothers is to throw the ice item at Princess Peach. Mm -hmm. Hashtag you free Peach. Freeze Peach. <laughs> Oh, Wait, I'm freeze, freeze peach. Free, free speech. Freeze peach. Freeze. Oh. There it is. Oh. Oh, it's a classic hippo tweet. That's um. 
live. Yes. All right. Uh, the first question is from Two Weeks One Spar, and I'm curious about this as well. Is it too late for me to get into Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers lore? Oh, absolutely. Never. No. Never too late. It, it Not... is, is never too late. I what do you have to do? That. What do you have to do to get in? Because I listened to the latest episode, not having heard the last few, and tried to join the Discord, and it was totally incomprehensible. <laughs> the, okay, I would say that in terms of what to listen to, probably the streams okay. on, on Twitch are the best Where, Are thing, they cataloged mostly somewhere? Sh- yes, on, on Twitch. On, th- on Twitch, on, our, on Twitch slash Rowdy Frickers Cop Killers. We tried to make it Rowdy Frickers Cop Killers, <laughs> Twitch literally would not allow us to For the record, a uh, uh, cop killing is allowed on Twitch, but fucking is strictly <laughs> banned. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. did, did you guys um, see the, the, my, what I told you but, but, that I deleted last mm-hmm. night? In yes. The, in the chat. Yes. Please, please say that on the podcast. Oh, Fucking Christ. embarrass yourself right now. Yeah. Lay yourself bare for oh. the fans. This to is amazing. You. I so I've been doing like just Bloodborne videos with May, and so I just mm. had the game open and the recording software open, and she had gone to bed, and I was listening to Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers, and I wanted to make like a video explaining why the PCP's quality had sort of, like, fluctuated so much over time, like, what, like, literal physical things happened, like, such Mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. that it used to be that everyone was editing it, and, like, because people were putting effort into the editing, and then that no longer became incentivized or, like, the people who were doing it weren't available to do it anymore, so now it's Mm -hmm, different. mm -hmm. And, like, just things like that, just, like, you know... I explained all of it. It was like 40 minutes long and I edited it. I listened to the whole thing back. I fucking created this video, started (laughs) uploading it and it was like 20% done. But like, because of the fact that I'm doing let's plays, I'm just like trying to get all the footage on and off my computer constantly. So I just deleted literally everything while it was still uploading not realizing that it had not finished uploading. Jesus Christ. Did you? I, I, linked, I linked a program that might be able to let you recover the file. It's possible. It. it could theoretically be recovered if you do it quickly. H- how? I, I deleted everything like oh, There's, last you night. Can it's, it's a real thing. recover deleted files. This is a program That's I linked crazy. called Recuva. Try it out. It's I, possible. I, I'll, it I'll give it a back. shot. Fucking but yeah, I, I including the thumbnail and everything, like that, like because I had already uploaded <laughs> every, the thumbnail. Every so every single fucking piece. Yeah, I like, spent like project. fifteen minutes making a thumbnail. You looked gone. straight at the thumbnail for the video you were uploading, and were like, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. I, I, okay. Well, the, the, let, let's let's I, learn a lesson <laughs> and be a little more patient. Stop smoking weed, Digi. Look stop what it's doing to you. I was shit. really tired at the Through time. For what Digi, it uh, yeah. why, why did you choose? But to the important question, to the important question, rowdy fuckers, cop killers, lore. You can watch the Twitch videos, but mostly you gotta join the Discord. I w- fucking I w- pick up a weapon. Get in there. Get in the dojo. But, pick but up like some the Discord has no, pick up some there's Molotov no like, cocktails and start there's dueling. There's no like when you go into the Discord, it doesn't give you like a pamphlet explaining what the fuck's happening. Did you? I'll explain to you right there now. There is. There's basic training. There's the basic training room with a link to the help document. Actually, um, uh, Crack is working on Crack is working on like a new website that has like a more detailed like explanation. Can, can you just make it? Like, I will explain it to you right now. I will explain mm. it to you By right now. By which I mean he's hacking right, into God the damn it! archives. God damn it! So fuck! Okay, the Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers. What a rowdy uh, Originally, fucker. it was supposed to be a non-setting, and it was not supposed to have lore, and I explicitly said this to Ben, that we should probably keep just a grounded setting. And unfortunately, even though I quite enjoy uh, the lore, uh, it's warped in this bizarre, like, stealing your dad rip-off show, basically. Uh, basically, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's stealing your dad painted green. So here's But it's also lore. canon to stealing your dad. No, it's not. <laughs> didn't it's not didn't it come into being before the well, lore? They're in the same time your dad? No, 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 it's no? not. It's not at all. It's but not. You, you would make no. you change God, okay, 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 okay. The, where's the lore of seeing your dad? Deep in, in the Arizona desert where where the Grand Canyon exists, there existed a town, and that town had nuclear uh, a nuclear reactor on it, and that nuclear re- uh, reactor spilled, and it flooded the entire Grand Canyon with toxic <laughs> waste, a.k.a. slime. Yeah. And this slime was so valuable for various <laughs> obvious reasons that there was a wreckage there's a specified obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there is a city erected next to it uh, named uh, we don't we're not entirely sure. Uh, some of the names are Slime City or Neo New Los Angeles City or Neo Milwaukee. Uh, 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 guys, I, I just want to let you know. Every time I say the name of the city, I always say New Los Angeles City, aka Neo Milwaukee. You have to say the whole thing. That is what <laughs> yeah, I. I want to do a fucking. No, do no. Okay, okay. <laughs> The, the rest of the lore is this. 
This became America's <laughs> fastest growing city. It is just a normal city. Uh, okay. But it, it, it's green, and inside the city, there exists a, an obelisk with unknown, uh, presumably extraterrestrial properties known mm -hmm. as Endless War, who incentivizes violence with his mere presence. <laughs> me, me and Ben in real life have moved to Slime City to uh, try and get rich working the slime mines, mine the valuable slime. And uh, we've started a Let's Play show for leisure, and that it canonically is within the world and because me and Ben presumably after playing a heated match of Super Smash Brothers got really mad at each other but because we're such pussies we didn't want to directly fight one another so we rounded the local youth and endangered uh, juveniles and forced them to do proxy warfare because we're too pussy to fight each other in real life wait but do you guys like live and work together in canon Yes, yeah. we live. We live in. We yeah, live in okay. a house together, or an apartment <laughs> what, together, what, and we do. We record let's plays. Are the, on are Twitch. the rowdies and, and me, fuckers aware of this? The war that you like live together in 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 the in the in the in the in the streets in the mean in the streets in the mean streets of Slime City. Yeah. Okay, okay, but this is, is the let Discord me tell you, okay, literally a Discord or is it a metaphor for like a war? Uh, you're just gonna have to find out. You're just gonna have to find out. You're just gonna have to find out. Watch the streams to find the the place to do the combat to pick a side and green. Okay, let me tell you. This is how. This is a real thing with real life consequences because me and Munchie released the new Rowdy Fuckers video. Well, I released whatever. We did it. I released it the other day. And in response to that video coming out, mm. new people joined the Discord and the Discord mm. became more active. And this affected the slime economy so oh. much that slime stock prices went through the Whoa. roof oh. and the economy was destroyed <laughs> as certain people as certain people became insanely wealthy on the slime coin stock market. As, as a result, in like a month or so, me and Ben are going to have to fight Iron Man style with at least <laughs> 400 mucks in oh Pokemon. God. At least 400 mucks. At least. Hey guys, it's me. No! 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 It's the Lord of Ghosts! No! It can't be the Lord of Ghosts! Oh He's so oh scary! Oh, it's the Lord of Ghosts! The he's the Rowdy Fuckers oh, Copulous oh, character! It's the Lord of Ghosts! And he's also oh, real oh and exists God. in the real world. I'm very I'm scary. scary. <laughs> no, it's the Lord of Ghosts! He's so scary! Don't oh, stay dead! Tricks. Everyone revive! Exclusion point alive! Don't don't feed into his lies! Do the not, Lord of Ghosts is too scary! Do not feed the Nega Slime. Do not feed the Nega Slime. It's Holy bad, shit. and I'm scared I'm of scared. it. By Leave, Lord of Ghosts! I have all these incests. I have this salt. Whenever I scratch my head, there's like a Kyoto blossom of skin and salt. It's and you can pop oh, it in your mouth. Ooh. I'm gonna feed that right to you right fucking now. Oh no, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Holy shit. Lord of Ghosts. What a haunting. Fucking you did it. Uh, Rowdy, the Rowdy fucker conquered his fear and drove away the Lord of oh, Ghosts. Oh, thank God. This time. Oh, this did I just miss the Lord of Ghosts? You missed it, dude. What yeah. the fuck were you? God yeah, but don't it. worry. I was just peeing. I, I have a feeling we'll see him again <laughs> real soon. Tune in to Slime Fest 2. Jesus. Yes. Alright, so since we're on the subject of uh, meta questions and behind the scenes shit, uh, Gwee Kale asks, where's the bonus Radcon 3 content for non-backers? We still haven't you, resolved it, I don't think. Like, you there's know, been no progress on the subject. Good question. I, like, I think we've all just, I mean, at least I've been wrapped up, and, like, there's still some major videos to get done for it, so that's kind yeah, of on yes. my mind. But we really should just release that in some fashion. The, the difficult know, guys, thing about all talk. these Kickstarters is it's, like, yeah. it's hard to say exactly when is this done, like... Appropriate. Like, yeah, yeah, when is this appropriate yeah. to address when we still have, like, unfinished business in doing the actual thing, you know? Um, Which we were all hard at work on, by the way. The Silly Your Dads are being edited currently, and uh, I went into like a writers meeting with Ethan, mm -hmm. and I, we went through it all, and we wrote down some jokes and funny shit to edit in. Excellent. And so those will be out soon, and uh, they're looking to be quite juicy, quite, quite juicy. I mean, I mean, to clarify, we have given like the, all the bonus content has been released for the Kickstarter yeah. people. It's just like we're deliberating whether or not on when. If we are to to like sell it to everyone else, yeah. I mean, I definitely want to. I, it's just the only mechanism I really think that we have is to like make it some sort of patron reward. Uh, but I don't want to like I don't know that that's kind of a weird way to handle it. Other than that, like I don't know how to like actually set up like a purchase thing where someone can send us like let's say five bucks and then we give them all the videos in response. I don't know how to like do that. So I don't know. We got to workshop something. We, we we should talk about this in tomorrow's meeting or something probably. Danix, Jack, you probably know something. Send it to us. Yeah, if right you want to tweet at us, uh, you um, know, send us some ideas. So we're already two hours and seven minutes. Do we want more questions or? I, I got one yeah, question from the from the from a, a pity question for today from the Twitter at TP Craftsters hashtag AskPCP. <laughs> uh, here's a question at Zoomzike asks, what color 
best embodies you as a person. And I just want to redirect you oh, to the newest episode of yeah. Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers, where Ben and Munchie go through a big old breakdown of all the colors associated the, the, with the PCP okay, boys. Here are the problem, children. Here are the problems. Yeah. Hippo and Digi are the problem when, when, when it comes to PCP colors. You say, just, you say it's Hippo, Hippo and Digi are the problem, problem, but you could just as easily say that Mage... And Nate are the problem. Well, like, I mean, the reason that, okay, like, Munchie and Ben were saying, for example, that they love my color, my bright green, which I agree yeah. is great, and it, like, fits my stuff. It's whatever. It's entrenched. Like, give uh, has always had this, like, green, but it's, it is a grandfathered in from the pony days. Tom yeah. has never had, like, a set color. He was, like, blue as a pony. Then he had the red with rebel pixels. Uh, Davu's just has gravitate and sky blue. We all kind of know this. Ben yeah. is black and white. Munchie is obviously pink. And Mage insists on being an extremely specific hexadecimal value of yeah. purple in everything. So, <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, that, that's the thing is that, like, Mage has, like, both Mage and I have historically, like, always been, like, pink-purple range. Like That is true. That is but, true. But, like, she, back in the pony I days. I used to make you, like, an indigo, did you? but it doesn't really back in the in. pony days think, she was like a darker yeah. like a deeper purple and i was more of like the pinkish purple because i had like the sweetie bell design and everything on my pony yeah she's my she, she's i mean but you know the people you know, they can do that but yeah but like i mean like i've got like the magenta meme thing right now which i kind of want to lean in on because i'm gonna make it like a relevant plot point in my I, series I, I think you should yeah so like a good meme for so yeah i that's what we kind of settled on you on with yeah. you, kind of like a in between red and purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I, I'm completely fine, Gigi, with you also being purple. In fact, I I, I want that, and I think that is a good idea. Yeah. But uh, there just are so few like cool colors. It just feels honestly, awesome. I feel like what we're missing I think the, other the side. approach that you guys have taken. Maybe reconsider the idea that like we're trying to represent a whole range of colors, and more just that it's like us. A set of like a a palette that complements each other. Yeah, like, like, you, like you know, when like you you're designing the, the... a Ghibli movie or something. Like you're yeah. just choosing colors that go good together. You know. Yeah, yeah, For, that, yeah. It's pretty much. I don't know say. that they do. Well, I mean, it's, just, it's, the... just, it's just kind of a lopsided rainbow, really. Yeah, the yeah. the the I'm like on the one side you've got the, you've got like the reds and the pinks on the other sides and then you've got like the greens well, and the I'm limes. I'm sort of saying that you could the, reconsider the, the color design to be more like that. That it's it's less about like having a breadth of colors and more about creating an aesthetic in the way that the colors blend. You know, sure. you know, I, I really yeah. think mm -hmm. thinking about we should really make mage like we I think we just have to change mage to be like a deeper like purple blue like she was in the pony days. Uh oh, that You're gonna, be, she's gonna fucking riot. This is gonna I, I, be I know, warfare I in the streets. <laughs> Well, but, but that, just, would, that would help uh, so much, wouldn't it? Because there would be more blue. There. Let's just, okay. Here's what we need. We just would, we would, but we can't just we can't we can't fucking miss. I, I, color uh, here's what we do. That's here's what we do. Crime. Hashtag yeah. and illegal. Hashtag make mage orange. We need to start hashtag <laughs> make no. mage orange. Oh. She needs to become orange to fill out our color palette. That's what we're missing. We have oh, yellow. Oh. We have red. Ben is like Ben's like the hemo spectrum car cat, where he's like the orange guy that time forgot and has just become black and white, which is fine. But we need a goddamn orange, and we got too yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, like hidden behind my black and white runs the secret one's the secret orange Patreon. Ah, uh, exactly. Oh, oh my god, that deep lore is actually great. I take it back. Branded. Ben is now black, white, and a secret orange. He is the orange slot. Secret orange. <laughs> Agent Orange. Uh, we hippo. Sense. What? What are you? What? For some of um, interview now, was presented. Just tell way. us. Well, I like the dark turquoise. I love that color. Been, but I, if if we really need to change it. I would not mind going into a Vriska blue. Oh. We don't okay. have a dark because yeah, I mean, it is Vriska and it's also Hippo's Hypocrite is. Blue. Yeah. It's not yeah, my, 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 my channel is blue themed and I like Vriska. So I, I like that. Yeah, that could than work. Green Are we prepared to abandon the the decades long rise to fame of Gib and Take, the world's greatest pony reviewer. I, I mean, Gib and Take know. has been a dead character for years now. Like aside Gib and from Take, he lives in the pony cast is. every week with every new yeah. episode of My Little Pony. But, goddamn! Like he just said, he's never been a part of the PCP though, except for maybe the part one of the, horse the cast. pony episode. Gib and Take is banned from the PCP. <laughs> Hypocrite is allowed in. And, like, maybe when he gets his cutie mark, totally he'll let him in. Blue themed, like. So that's that's always been. My uh, you know what? Make it hashtag make Gib blue. Uh, I like it. I would think I, that if we needed orange, orange Nate orange. has like plenty of orange shit in his like no, iconography. Nate no, no. okay, listen, bright, bright listen bright to me. I cannot be orange because of the communist glasses meme. I cannot oh, yeah, be orange. True. It's unacceptable. Uh, I would die. And plus, like, yeah. we need that light green. Like, nobody's like a, that kind of green. 
um, is what I, I, I'm saying Nate, to myself. I, I personally believe, like, like, like mm. you, Nate, Ben, and like, I don't know, maybe me are like the strongest. Like, no one can budge that. Like, no yeah. one can budge that. Nate's I, I love no my my know, bright green for the following bright. reasons. One, it, it is matched like the background color of all the art since Ben first designed it years ago. Two, it is like mm, the color mm. of spiral power, which I always think to myself whenever I look at it. And there was a third reason I can't remember, but those two are good enough. Or some other third yeah. thing will ever change that. I wrote it down, but I think oh, I had, like, and, four and reasons. Purple. I just like purple because I associate it with dementia, and that's, like, <laughs> like I've uh, always why? tried What's to convey connection? that my videos are someone who's unhinged and lost their mind. And, like, that's, like, I want that to be a constant presence felt in my videos that, like, this guy might be insane. And that's why I've always used purple theming, except for when I'm trying to be, yeah. like, accessible, like in the pony videos where I had green, because I was, like... That's they why the After Dark comment. videos were purple and the main channel videos were green. It was like a... Oh, a uh, wait, wait, much, much, wait, real quick. I yeah. remembered what the third point was because I looked it up. It's that the purple and pink of my avatars look really good with yellow because it looks like delicious watermelon. That's, uh, yeah. that's Oh, oh, I remember when I was designing mm -hmm. Wee Wagga, though, I specifically was trying to make it a watermelon. That's right, you did. Yep, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, like greens, but, but, purples, and pinks are like my... But by, by the way, did you? I remember oh, there there was a t there, this this moment stuck out with me in my mind for like many a year, yeah. where I sent you like this in card featuring Digi Bro Digi Brony in in mm -hmm. a uh, in the background like like of a of a bar, uh -huh. and you said that that was your favorite thing that you've ever like I have ever made was yeah. was fucking Digi Brony in a bar, and it was funny because like I am super into the aesthetic of bars and like it was just a. I mean, back then, I didn't have shit tons of fan art, so I hadn't been presented in this way over and over again. Like, now I have, like, hundreds of drawings of me, like, smoking weed and drinking and all this. Like, people exclusively draw me, like, doing those things now. But at the time, it was like, oh, my God, someone finally drew me in a bar. Like, this is where my pony has always belonged, you know, and, like, now we're finally here. Hey, here's a, here's a funny-ish question. Uh, anyone else want to comment on this color thing? No. I, no okay, great. Color would be, so. I just want to say how much, how glad I am that I snatched up the black and white. Yeah, you mantle. really lucked out. There's Most no, people would fight over nothing that. Else. Most people would fight over that there's slot. Like in, uh, like yeah. in Pulp Fiction, when they all, no, sorry, uh, Reservoir Dogs, when they all fought over who'd be Mr. Black. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, one spar and with another question here asks: During the process of editing a video, I find that starting the render, i.e., the wait four hours button, can feel relieving at some times and anxiety-inducing at others. But this is the this is the interesting part. Do you have do you any of you also feel a specific way when you initiate that process? Wait, I I read that question wrong. I thought it was: Do you have a ritual that you do when you start that process? I'm going to answer that question because I like it better. Yes, I I I, I, I <laughs> of relax. Course you do it. <laughs> I, I, I crack open a big uh, glass of water. Skull. <laughs> I smash a glass of water uh, to get the jagged edge. I fill it with water. I take a long, deep draft. I think that's the word for drink of it. Uh, and I, I just lie down. I just lie I down for, for a while. the word for drink might be drink there. Well, buddy. I'm trying to flex my <laughs> words. Uh, I just, I just, well, I just, I'm trying to express hmm. how relieved and great I feel when I'm finally rendering a video. It's such a wonderful feeling for me. N my, uh, my you technique. really, you really remind me of mm. the YouTuber CGP Grey in mm. a lot of ways sometimes. <laughs> though, though, yeah. if you just took Grey but removed all, like, like, if you took Nate and removed all memes, sure. then you would get CGP Grey. Okay. He, he, he's super methodical. I would, I think it would really behoove you to listen to the first episode of Hello Internet because you would get super yeah. inspired he's, by the he's way He's very he Spartan and, um, the world. He, hmm. he does not have anything unnecessary in his house. I'm going like, to write that all. down. Right. I'm going to write that down. Um, yeah, if you were if you were to like create a spectrum of like a robot internet celebrities and CGP Grey is like pretty far on one end and then like hmm. Maddox is completely on the opposite end as far as you can possibly go, Nate is like super like closer to CGP Grey but more in the middle I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, like, okay. Like robots. It, it, My technique Nate's just better deal... than CGP Grey. You know, I was thinking about this. Technique... I was thinking, tell me, is this a thing? I was thinking about dry comedy, and I'm like, nah, man, I'm into that wet comedy. I'm yeah, dripping. I, 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 I was that you? Fucking level. I came up that when I was like 12. Okay, I, all right. I, that's part of my I, identity. I, I, I just want to say that somebody say that, it, that I love spectrum it. that Davu just described. Like, I was trying to think, like, what is the meaningful, like, putting those two people on opposite ends of the spectrum? Oh, yeah. And it's just like literally an insanity bar, and he's putting you in the middle of the insanity. 
candy bar. Like, like everyone here is insane, just in like well, all, all different of them are like of human ways. robots. But like CGP right. Grey has actually like completely thought out every element of his and is right, like right. actually just <laughs> maximum efficient. Whereas yours is like a somewhat warped, like halfway there. Like yeah, you know, I'm working on it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's so like if your robot's fucking CGP Grey is like running like perfectly corrected Linux, and Maddox is running like some fucking malware. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh, dude, poor guy. dude, my techniques. My and Nate's just a Windows. For, uh, like he's it's, a Windows. It's, yeah, it's not a, a lean machine, but he keeps the desktop clean. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Beautiful. So my technique for how to deal with the render is have Adobe Premiere because it renders shit. I think literally ten times faster. There will be times in Virginia when, like, Ben was having to borrow my computer for rendering, and Ben was like, Hey, Davu, I gotta, like, render this video literally all day. Oh, okay, hold on, give me a second to render this other video extremely quickly in Adobe Premiere before you turn on in Sony Vegas and take all day on rendering uh. something. I actually, there's actually something fucked up with my computer, because I assembled it myself and then shipped it around the country three goddamn times. So the fan, the CPU fan, isn't quite fixed right, mm. so I had to throttle the power of the CPU to only work at like 80% of its capacity uh, until I could get that fan fixed. And even still, Adobe Premiere renders videos like five times faster than Vegas would. So use Adobe Premiere, it takes the edge off. Yep. Makes sense to me. Agreed. Never. Um, when I render video, but maybe. it's usually just like a sigh of relief. Like, yeah. Because yeah. I, I mean, I edit really fast and I just try to like, for me it's like the second I've made the last edit, if I, I mean, well, if I've watched it back enough times that I don't want to have to watch the entire thing again, because chances are I watch it, like, over and over again the whole time I'm editing it, so I know it's done, you know, and then... You're right, yeah, right. Thing, you don't understand. With Adobe Premiere, it renders so fast, I can just render it before having to watch it back. I'll watch yeah. it back in the render and redo the render. I Someti some, like, sometimes, like, sometimes I just don't even bother to, because, like, the, the preview window can be so shit in Vegas that, like, it's not exactly. even going to give you You know, it's actually... Uh, I'm just video. looking back like, at one spot's actual question, and he, he's asking, like, it can feel relieving at sometimes know. and anxiety-inducing at other times. I, I, I would assume that the anxiety part... Me. I mean, like, getting a project done is just, like, pure good feelings for me. But the render itself... I remember when I was rendering uh, my, my big... Final Fantasy lecture recently, that was like over a 24 hour render. So like that was very anxiety inducing because I was afraid of knocking my fucking connections and killing it. So I had to start all over in that sense. Sure. It can be anxiety inducing. I think it can be anxiety inducing when uh, you're not able to like, you're not at your fullest of brain power, mm -hmm. and so you have looked over it to make sure that yeah. all the things oh, are right, but right. maybe... But you can't maybe convince that, yourself you, you, you can't, that Yeah, it's you ready. can't convince right. yourself that it's actually correct, but you, 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 you can't waste all day That's looking true. at it. So you have to press render, but you just, you're just you just not sure. It, even, Good point. It, it, it hasn't happened a whole lot, because ah. I'm not a mainly video guy, but whenever mm -hmm. I have press rendered, it's always the same. A press render, I'll, like, jump up like a fucking gunshot went off. I'll, like, <laughs> run down the stairs, I'll get some food, and I'll, like, like I'll, like stumble outside and just take a long walk walk while the video renders because i've done my dues i'm not a video yeah, person i don't yeah. care about editing just like i've done it i've done my dues i believe bye and then i fucking run out the door yeah one thing i do like, like doing Digi after i hit render episode i hope we just power didn't go off or something what uh because -oh. uh, we'll i wanted um, want to say something that was related to him because well when you oh, go ahead you first typo. Uh, yeah yeah one thing i do like uh doing when i've hit render is usually I have like multiple projects stacked on top of each other um, going on like in my brain at the same time. Uh, so as soon as I've hit render on one thing, I'm like, okay, I can't really use my computer, but I really enjoy like figuring out how I can make progress on the next project immediately. Right, right. If I'm still awake. If I'm tired, then I go to bed. If I'm hungry, I get food. But I always want to like immediately work on the next thing while the thing is rendering. Because it's like a He's big back. old like time it's it's like mm -hmm. a it's like a ticking clock you can get stuff done in this time frame that's exactly how i feel that, that's why for example i really love working out because working out gives I'm me bad. just an hour and a half generally three days a week that i i can't do anything but like just think uh, and I'll generally like, put on podcasts to listen to her or something. Uh, you, you know what, Nate? I just realized I have that exact same like time, and I yeah. really appreciate that. But for me, it's taking a shit. Uh -huh. I, take, I take extraordinarily long. <laughs> you're gonna shits, you're gonna so get the think. hemorrhoids if you shit too long, dude. I think no. that has to do with you being. No. He, sta he stands up. Look, I, I, I talked to my doctor. All right, and my doctor said if you take a long time to shit, 
That, that is, I was like, wait, 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 wait. You mean just like if I'm on the toilet for longer, taking a shit, that's going to like increase my chance of hemorrhage? She's like, literally, exactly, yes. That's what it is. Yeah. If you're straining yeah. on the toilet, you, I, I'm uh, just saying. I, it's so there's an incentive to get off the toilet fast. That's I all think it, it happens a lot more if you're in your late teens. I don't know about you guys, but I used really? to take super long shits when I was in my late teens. Like I, I was sitting there that. for like 45 minutes, and then like eventually mm -hmm. I just I think just because I started eating more, I don't know, better, or my body stopped letting me eat <laughs> as bad as I was. Like, uh, yeah, I shit more. Yeah, easy word. Now. If, he, if, if people want, I used to do that because I would like get home from work and I have my own bathroom and I'm just I. I didn't even realize it because I was trying to immediately get back to working on videos when I get back from cleaning windows. But, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. just my body requires break time. So it snuck that in under my nose. And if someone ever asks just how much time did you spend sitting on the toilet after shitting, I could just, sh just, just tell them I got to level 207 on Candy Crush with no power ups. Indeed. So hold on. The thing about rendering and, and nervousness, I did. The, the only nervousness I really have had in my YouTube career when it comes to finishing videos is just that I've. It's just for the when I started working for Digi, and then I have to be sending them off to someone else who could send it back to me after like a day. That's the thing that was like the most difficult is that like you're done with a video, but now you have to like wait for a random time for someone else to then see it and then approve or deny it, or like you might have to change something. And then, like, I could have completely moved on to a different project by then, right? But very recently, I finally attained enough confidence that I know exactly what Digi wants that, like, I don't have to worry about, like, something blindsiding me 95% of the time. So sure, yeah. So that's nice. Uh, well, guys, if we're all done, I want to read this one final question. Uh, just bear with me for a second. It's a little long, but I think you'll appreciate it. Uh, it's from AJ Shoop, and here it is. My friend... Hey. Yeah, what's up, AJ? It's, it's that it's that that, boy. that lowly cryptid. Um, <laughs> here here's the question. <clears throat> My friend orders a Big Mac. I say, why are you ordering a Big Mac? He says to me, he says, I remember my mom used to get these back in college. I'm thinking, a burger because of mom? Hmm, that's bizarre. I ask him how life's been. Oh, you know, same old, same old. What a middling response. Maybe I can get something better out of him. I ask, remember that girl you liked, Hannah? He says, oh, yee yee. She was nice, but we didn't like the same kind of movies. He likes Criterion stuff. You know, Jim Jarmusch and whatever. What a particular man. So I ask him. I ask, well, <laughs> what did she like to watch? He says, anime. Oh, huh. Interesting. We sip on our sprites in silence. I look up and ask, in a quip whip of a query, What's your favorite anime? That's it, everybody. Thank you for being with us on this episode of the Procrastinators Jesus Podcast. Uh, uh, Patreon.com slash the Procrastinators. Give us one dollar to get into the Patreon. <laughs> Uh, was yes. This a, was this real? Like, was this? Was this the shit? <laughs> that was. Was this the real shit? Was this the raw shit? Was this the like pull back the curtain? You see us laid bare. Was this the shit that you want? Donate to our Patreon. I like this episode. Yeah, now. that's what I. Well, I can only hope. I hope and so. And if you it wasn't, then I don't to. disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I like this episode. It was good. It was actually like substantive the whole time. Uh, yeah, you ain't wrong. Are we still recording? Uh, of course we are. We of course are. we're still recording. Oh, goodbye. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm the host. Uh, goodbye. Wait, wait, hang, hang on. Bye. I gotta plug things. Patreon.com slash the procrastinators. Uh, uh, give us $1, join the chat. $5 to get every goddamn bonus episode. There's like 14. Jesus. Last one was wild cards. It was a hoot and a half. Uh, we got some shirts, Redbubble, buy them and stuff. And uh, at TP Krasnares, follow us on Twitter for various links and things. Uh, and we'll get back to you All about right, purchasing we'll... Radcon backer videos. So, All right, have fun. Bye time. Bye. 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 Yeah. Uh. I'm supposed to be working right now. I'm supposed to be working right now. But I'm not working. I'm doing nothing. My dick, I'm dreaming.